Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening to the early edition. Man, you're early tonight, right? Good evening. You know, I decided to get on here a little bit early. It's good to have you all with us. I'm just inviting a few people. We'll see how TikTok is about not lagging or anything. Let's see here. Good evening. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Shell Bell. Joe, welcome. Uh, Chrisia, good to see you. Everybody come in here. It's like about 1016. So since we started early, we're going to go till about 1230. We're going to do, am I going to do two hours and a half? Well, yeah, we're going to go up to at least 12. We're going to go to about 12 midnight. Maybe might move it a little bit more. Welcome to the show. If you've never seen the show before, it's because I'm on early. I'm usually on at 11. It's only a little after 10, 16 minutes after. Tracy Bolt, welcome. Uh, lovely Starfish, welcome to our show. This is the number one spiritual UFO talk show you might have heard about on social media. This is it. Whether you're in Russia, wherever you are, welcome to the show. Good to have you with us, everybody out here. And my name is Commander Alion. Hey, Karen Stevenson. I am a contactee from the 60s. I have a wealth of information on the subject of the subject on a more spiritual level. I don't get into nuts and bolts. I get into people's encounters, visitations. Uh, hey, Karen Nichols, good to see you. I get into, involved in people's... Have the Andromedans been in contact recently? The Andromedans, uh, Lucas, uh, are working within the Ashtar Command, so I would suppose they are probably making contacts. I just don't know where they are. I'm sure there are individual people around the planet that are connected with them, uh, human beings that are connected with them. So I would say that there's a possible... Michelle, thank you for the gifting. And we're going to set our goals here tonight. We're going to do <coughs> our new goals for this evening. And let's see what we shall do. I'm kind of making a decision here where I want to go with the goals. I think we'll do the hanging, the hanging lamps. Let's see here. And uh, welcome again to the show. We're glad to have everybody with us here on Encounters. This is number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media, I'm your host, Commander Alion. I'm also with the Ashtar Command, so what does that mean? If you've never heard of the Ashtar Command, that's the other flip side of the coin on this cosmic thing. So the Ashtar Command represents all the planetary spiritual beings of light from many, many dimensions, many planets, many solar systems, many galaxies, but all operate in a higher frequency or vibration. Podman, welcome to our show. Let me see. Hey, thank you, uh... Shamana, let's see here. Joseph, thank you for being here. Nat Nella, welcome to the show. Uh, Blue Web, double zero, welcome. Mike, let me see here. I'm just catching up with all these names. Uh, you're welcome, Lucas. Yeah, there's always a train going by because I'm not too far from the railroad station. Gary Moore, welcome. Helen, hey, good to see you. Jessica Welch, hey, good to see you. Lynn Young, welcome to our show Encounters, Lynn. Let's see here. <coughs> can we perceive? Camera man Chad says, can we perceive outer dimensional beings? Only if you are open in your consciousness. You could, but you have to have, and there are probably human beings around the planet that are. I think it's a matter of meditation. So if you meditate and work on uh, higher dimensional music, or higher vibrational music, that will help your vibrational opening to see beings in the outer dimensional areas. I'm Marlene, welcome to the show, Jess Parker. Hey, good to see you. Area 52, thank you for the share. Michael Kemp, I experienced an encounter with a large, oh, this is interesting, maybe we'll bring Michael up here. Yeah, Marlene, we are early. Michael Kemp, with a large what? Uh, I wanna see what, Michael Kemp, can you tell us a little bit more about that? So one of the things we do on here, please share and like. We want to get to 100,000 likes. Please follow at the same time you're liking the show. 
And what we're doing here is we also interview people. I do have a lot of information, but we do interview people here. I think TikTok's lagging on the numbers because I know there's more than 79 people looking at the show right now. That'll probably jump. There it goes to 90. Uh, so we interview people. You have to be over 18. No cursing, no foul language, no smoking, no vaping, no drinking, no drugs, uh, no kids on the show, uh, no paranormal discussion, no politics, and no religion. And I think that covers all my uh, bulletin points for the show. But I'm interested in Michael Kemp's story. I experienced an encounter with a large, and I don't know, I saw the large part, but I haven't seen the end of the sentence. I will try to hold on as much as I can. Okay, uh, Norma, good to see you. There's got to be more to the story. How come shadow people are so noisy? Well, I never have had contact with any of those kind of things, so I couldn't tell you, honestly. I wish I could ESH. Uh, they're at a different frequency, so I don't really ever... I wouldn't know why they're noisy. I didn't even know they were noisy. Um, let's see here. Hey, Chris, welcome to the show. Marin, welcome. David Camden, welcome to the show. And uh, Yasho, welcome. Hey, brother. Oh, nosy, not noisy. Okay, so I'm not sure why they're not why they're nosy. I've never, you know, hey, half pint. <coughs> I've heard of the shadow people, but because I work in a very different level with the Christed beings of light, I have no vibrational connection to knowing much about them. Hey, green eyes, good to see you. Kit Kat, good to see you. We're on a little bit early tonight, everybody. Welcome to the show. And I was like kind of scanning the TikTok and I said, well, there's not really not too, not too much on here tonight, is there? And then I said, well, I'm going to get on early tonight to get all the people that really want to know what's happening. Yeah. So I, I don't tend to have any encounters with them. I plan on never having the encounters with them. I just work at a very high operational level. Oh, let's see here. Emily, hey, Emily, welcome. Hey, girl, now, I, and welcome to our show, Debbie Satot, I think it's Satot. Uh, Jed, good to see you. Staying strong one, hey, welcome. And if you have had a positive encounter, I know I deal with a lot of different things. I'd love to hear some real stories. Uh, hey, Barbara, good to see you down there. Hope you're doing well. <coughs> and Ray, welcome. Last night we had a great show. All my shows are cored up. Now, when I do these shows, for people that have missed any of my shows, they're on my YouTube channel. Yes, indeed, the Commander has a YouTube channel. You're going to go to Ashtar Command Spaceship News. The show from last night was phenomenal. You have to listen to that show. Uh, and uh, Barbara has a question for me. Barbara, we'll definitely get to that. Would, uh, let's say, uh, no, the rumor says, would scare me the same clothing, the same people. As I grew older, I st you stopped having those dreams. You were having dreams. Let's see here. Psychic readings, welcome. Alex Montoya. Hey, Alex. Sharon J. Welcome to our show, Tracy. So, can I get the Ashtar Command visit for my birthday? Uh, I can't tell them to send ships anymore. Um, they have to really doing some really important work. I love to do that, but I can't. Um, but if you meditate, Barbara, med meditate and go within, uh, you can try to connect with your star family, your own star family and ask them to visit you. So connect with the meditation, high vibrational music, and just focus on where you think your star family is and see what happens. Yeah. I can't send the ships anymore anywhere because they're really needed for other things uh, as we get ready for direct contact. so um, And they're watching the show, so they watch it from the ship. Uh, my family's watching on the spaceship right now, and I've, I've honored them, and I told them I would not do that. You know, There'll be a time when they'll appear on their own, but I am very much respecting the wishes of the council and everybody on the ships. Uh, let's see here. I've seen them back a long time ago. Uh, the little ones, they have uniforms. 
Oh, okay, this is interesting. I want to bring this person up. Again, you have to be over 18. I want to set the rules. Uh, I think it's OJ Biwa. I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh, I'm interested in that story. And just to let people know, you have to be over 18. Again, the rules of the show. As a t- I'm also a talk show host at NPR Radio at WESU for 20 years uh, here in Connecticut, broadcasting worldwide, WESUFM.org, NPR Pacific Radio. And my show there on Sunday mornings is called The Cosmic Eye, as Trek Man Radio Show. Um, but you have to be over 18. Uh, no kids on the show, no smoking, no vaping on the show, no drunks, no drinking, no paranormal discussion, no politics, and no religion. Those are the rules of the show, and that's, that's, why, that's why it's called Encounters, UFO Contact. Uh, so, yeah. And we'll see if we can, uh, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. I think it's O.J. Biwi. Is it correct, maybe? Let's see what we have here. I've seen them back a long time ago. The little ones, they have uniforms. Huh. Interesting. And we're going to throw it out there. I read. I usually read what people's encounters were, and that's how I choose my guests. Let's see here. And one thumb on each hand. They might have been Zeta. Jamie, thank you for the uh, roses. Uh, yes, at the TBS, they are. They're busy fixing a lot of our mistakes. Ah, Doxy Mom. Let me... Doxy Mom. Let's see here. Doxy Mom, I just sent you an invite. Doxy Mom, my husband and I have had unexplained experience in the Everglades. So Doxy Mom, come on up on Encounters, the number one spiritual UFO talk show. Eddie, thank you for the gifts. Doxy Mom. All you have to do, you'll see the multi-guest option. Just press the button on the multi-guest option with the two little people. And I shall bring you up, Doxy Mom. Let's see here. Hey, Catherine. Your brother and I, your brother and yourself see them. Interesting. Those are Zeta. Hey, Trace. Good to see you. John Mary, good to see you. Hey, let's see here. Hey, Bernie. <clears throat> I'm looking at all the comments. Hey, Purple. Uh, good to see you. Rodney, welcome. But uh, Doxy Mom, where's Doxy Mom? Thank you for, Hetty, the, the little gift. I got so much apple cider, it's really great. I got a whole bunch of apple cider last weekend. So, Doxy Mom, uh, we'd love to have you on the show. Let me see, can I get her up here? Thank you, Bonnie. I appreciate that. Thank you for the hanging lights. Very much appreciated. I hope I don't have to pull teeth to get people to come on and be interviewed tonight. I'm hearing some very interesting stories here. Max Tina Man. Hey, Max Tina Man. Good to see you. Lovola, good to see you. Everybody out here. And uh, this is Encounters. It, we actually started early tonight, so I'll be going till about 1230. We're going to do a two and a half hour show. Yeah, that's right. Two and a half hours of encounters. Anina, welcome. Rachel, good to see you. Hello. Carrie, Lone Wolf, welcome. Pretty Eyes Red, welcome. Uh, Elvie, welcome to the show. Monique, hey, good to see you. Half Pint, I got a picture of a trail, a tall being by a portal. We'll have to bring you guys up in a little bit too, Ray and Mary. You can show us the picture. Now, this is the question. Hey, Monica. So, please share and like if you know people that you wish to have join us. Definitely the right people. Invite them. So, we're going to do this here. We'll just uh, I'm just randomly inviting people here to the show. We'll see what happens. Okay, I just sent a few more people uh, an invite. Random invites, you know. So we're, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. I was just reading some stuff 
about uh, the, this Earth that they found a little short while ago. So evidently, NASA has a, Kel a Kelper satellite or something, and they found an Earth-like planet. And this Earth-like planet they found, believe it or not, had artificial light coming from its surface. Not natural light, artificial light. And there was a picture of it, which I was trying to find the picture, that showed this planet that looked just like an Earth-like planet with this all these artificial lights coming from the ground of the planet into space. Which tell I know NASA does lie. They do. But the fact of the matter is, this picture, if it's undoctored, and if, let's say the picture was real, and they didn't doctor it, because they obviously forgot to do that. Sometimes things do get out from NASA that are not supposed to get out. Now, we know that there are Earth-like planets like Earth, other places, and where people do live. We don't need NASA to tell us that, or not tell us that. Hey, we've talked about that on this show forever, Right? It's not unknown that there are other planets with oxygen and people living on them that might be more advanced than we are and most likely are. You know, it's yeah, absolutely. It's not a it's a, it's a not a space agency is absolutely correct, Clara. <laughs> it's absolutely something else. Oh, user. Oh, this is an interesting person. I've been inside and outside the ice wall. I don't. I don't believe in an ice wall, but I do there. I believe that there is, um, there are extraterrestrial things happening within Antarctica. User 209, let's see here. 209, 209, if you'd like to come up, I'm you have to have like 50 followers. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna pin your, I'm gonna pin you up here. Everybody, everybody follow user 209900064178. They say they've been inside and outside Antarctica, 1987 through 1991, uh, Mick Murdu Station. Interesting. Everybody follow that person. I think we're going to try to get them to come up on the show. Uh, people ask me a question, Randy, where well, this is not really not a show for that, but I will answer your question. All the planets are round. I don't, I don't follow a lot of those people with the flat earth arguments on TikTok or anywhere else because we're really about uh, extraterrestrial intelligence and people from other planets and that kind of thing. But simply, yeah, all the planets are around. Hey, Mish Mish. Philly George, uh, good to see you. Phyllis Sanderson, welcome. Let's get user 209900064178 up to 50 followers. That's right. There are more important things than that. That's right. Uh, thank you, Dazed. I appreciate the hanging lights. Thank you so much, brother. And let's see. I'll bring up, I'm going to bring his uh, information back up here. Where is it here? I did. I, here we go. It's going to be up there for 59 seconds. So we get them up to 50. I'm going to try to bring user 209 up. We're going to see if we can do this thing. User, uh, user 209 has got 42 followers according to my computer thing here. We need to get them up to 50. Thank you, Mike, for the follow, Mike G2020. Uh, Liani, uh, thank you for the heart. I appreciate that. Absalom, thank you for the follow. We appreciate that, too. So people that are watching this show for the first time, we're usually on at 11. I got on a little bit after 10. And it's good to have all the new people finding us here. This is the number one spiritual. Hey, Calico. This is the number one spiritual UFO talk show. Uh, yeah, my email is going to be for the for the TV for the program right here. So everything for encounters. If you have any video footage, uh, stuff related to contact, you can email me uh, at that email. Another train going by. Just remember, if you hear a train 
the horn of her train. I got a train track not too far away so you can hear the trains. Let's see if we can get that person on here. I think we, hey, Papa Smurf. Let's see, can I go back? Randy Smith, just curious if their ETs are from beyond the ice wall, if ice wall exists. Well, it's not really an ice wall. The Ashtar Command will tell you there's no ice wall on their right. Somebody along the way on internet history decided to create the idea that there's an ice wall he has 40 so far. Yeah, he needs 10 more. Oh, man, this is amazing. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to try to bring him up. I use a 209. I'm going to try to bring you up. Uh, press the multi guest option. Everybody keeps following him, please. He's almost at 50 or he or she. He said, he says, I've had contact with them in 1989 at Bird Surface Camp in Antarctica. I want to hear this story. Everybody follow this person right now. Every single person on here. Follow user 209-900-64178 on Encounters, please. This is a story I want to hear. If you're not watching this show right now, you're just not watching something. <laughs> we always have interesting people on this show. Always. I never, ever have a not, not somebody's interesting here. Let's see. Where is he now? Let's see how many. He's at 59. Okay. User 209. Do you know how to go on live? Press your multi-guest option. 209. Press, press your, uh, your, your 16. You can go on live with me now. She's not a he. She's not he. You can go on live right now. I want to. I want to get this person on live here, who was in Antarctica, and had contact. Uh boy, how's this going to happen? Uh, please do the guest option. I will. I just want to get this person on live here. I'm really focused on getting two hundred nine up here. The multi guest. Button, uh, 209, press the multi guest button right now. There's a multi guest button on your TikTok. Let's see here. I'm determined to get this person on here, folks. I think we've done it. Oh, hey, user 209, welcome to the number one spiritual UFO talk show and host of WESUNPR's Cosmic Eye Radio. How are you? I'm doing great. Great. And what's your first name? Um, my mom. Um, my first name is Michelle. Michelle. So tell yeah. us, tell us your history. You worked in you were in Antarctica. Yes, I joined the United States Navy in 1987. Okay, very good. So I honor you for your service. And um, so when you went to the, so I, now are you, so let me ask you a question. In 1987, how, how did you know about Admiral Bird? I didn't find out all these things until I got there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of these things. I was a young, young girl at 19 years old that mm -hmm. was sitting mm -hmm. there and um, I didn't understand the reason why I was sent there. Mm -hmm. What um, kind of level? What kind of level in the Navy did you have? In terms, my dad was in the Air Force. So, when you were in the Navy, like what? How did you? How were you able to go to Antarctica? Um, at the A school, I was told that's where I was going. They just told you you're going there. You're not going to like uh, Spain or on a Navy ship to France or something? No, sir. No, sir. I, was, I wasn't I was given an option. I was told mm -hmm. that that's where I was going to be getting stationed. Mm -hmm. So when you got there, you said you were at a certain uh, camp or a base. I know there's different bases in Antarctica that scientists have explorations there. What was the name of your base? And tell us how you had this connection 
because uh, you know Admiral Byrd was long gone. How, how did you what how did you learn about Admiral Byrd? Um, when I first arrived, and it was um, in September when the when the daylight was changed. I mean, when the night time was changed to uh, daylight, I arrived in McMurdo Station, Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And my job was to refuel the aircraft. So you were you were a naval person, and you were refueling the uh, the aircraft at that station at that base, correct? Correct. Okay. So let's go into it. So when you first got there, you didn't know anything about Admiral Byrd, I don't think, or his history or anything, did you? I didn't know anything. I wasn't told anything about you know, that continent or anything. I wasn't taught anything. I mm -hmm, arrived mm -hmm. down there as a 19 year old. Yeah. Who had so, never, go ahead. So when you were working at there at a refueling station, how did that turn into a situation where you had contact? And let's get slowly into okay. what happened there and how did they, how did you get into the other thing? Because it was one Sunday and when you're down there in, with the military, and at least my job, we work every day. So it was one Sunday afternoon. And I've always, because of, I was a female and worked with a lot of men, I was always alone mm -hmm. for 12 hours in, in my job. Mm -hmm. And something happened to me, put it like this, I was in a little shack alone and we was at the time the uh, transferring the gasoline to other places. We had an old um, a Russian uh, what do you want to say a Russian uh, like thing that transferred the fuel, and you had to crank it up, and it was very loud. Mm -hmm. But this particular day, uh, the door swings open, and there's nobody working because everybody mm. was. On Sundays, except for the people that did my job, and there's nobody working. So nobody the door. Did. So I'm laying in there on a bench, sleeping, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know I have to go check the um, the machine every so often. So I'm mm -hmm. laying in there, and my door swing. The door swings out. Hmm. So when I woke, when I came to what I thought I came to. Um, I'm thinking it's someone that worked with me, playing tricks on me. So right. when I look up, the sunlight was coming from behind. So I only right. seen, I only seen below the neck mm -hmm. and uh, the left arm because that's what opened the door. I couldn't see. Mm. Yes, it was like the sun. Mm. I couldn't see the face. Mm -hmm even though the sun was coming from the back. So when I got out of work, when I finally got out of work, I went to the bar mm -hmm. and I started telling people about what I, and, and no, let me back up. So once that, that happened and now I'm still thinking I'm asleep and I, I don't know mm -hmm. what's going on. So right. I wake up, I finally come to, and I don't hear um, the pump. I don't hear the pump going. Nothing. Nothing's going on. Yeah. Nothing is silent. So when mm -hmm. I when I when I go and open the door, the door. So now the door is closed. I go to open the door. Mm -hmm. I can hear the uh, pump, but behind where I was, the cabin was. You had a mountain, mm -hmm. and okay. you could see dust from the footprints. Hmm. So I went to the bar that night, and I'm telling talking to anybody that would listen what I experienced. Yeah. The next day, pack your bags. You're going to Bird Service Camp. Now, Bird Service Camp is in between McMurdo Station and the mm -hmm. South Pole. The South Pole. Yes. It's a, it's, they they stopped there to um, gas up to go to the South Pole. Okay. Um, hold on. Mm. It's all right. Take so, your time. Yeah. So the next day, I'm on the flight to Bird Service Camp. We get there. 
the only thing you can see is the flags to where the building is or, and and where my tank is and you couldn't see nothing so we had to blow out the, the cb guy that was there we had to blow ourselves do a dynamite to get into the building really so we okay. was there when they dropped us off we was there for probably about two weeks we was dropped off and there was no more communication at all you were you were completely isolated there was no it was me and maybe six other guys okay completely isolated so mm -hmm. i never get the cb guy he always he was the only one working outside so he would always help me clear the snow you know from around the fuel bladder and blah 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 <clears throat> so one day i go out there and i'm laying on top of the fuel bladder and i'm just looking up because everywhere you look it's just ice everywhere it don't matter yeah and three days later the men there tell me i was missing wait a minute they were telling you you were missing for three days for three days you were missing at that what? location are you still there hello oh yes at that location okay. at that location i was missing and i went outside it was it was probably because you know it's always daylight from september to february Right. So it was always 24 hours of, and, and, and actually, believe it or not, you can see the sun and the moon at the same time. Yeah, no, I believe it up there, right. yes. So I remember going out, and it was probably about maybe 1 in the morning, but it mm -hmm. was still daylight, and I was laying on the few that um, I was in charge of. It was like putting like a water bed. Mm. Right. And so I would go out there and I would just lay up and just look around. And it was just totally peace. It was quiet. Mm -hmm. But when I went back inside, the gentle, the, uh, my shipmate, yeah. who was outside, he, he's always out there because he got to clean, the, you know, push out the old snow. Clean. Right. He said I was missing for three days. You were missing for three days. And nobody, he, how did he know you were missing? Because he would, they because it was only me and probably six other gentlemen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a shack. So if now, they I, now, when you were missing, this is really interesting, people. You're watching Encounters, and we have a special guest on here that worked in Antarctica. So when you went to this space and you were missing, um, I've got to believe you were taken somewhere and you met people that were from. And can you, you go into that? Correct. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct, sir. You're absolutely correct. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm very interested. Our audience is very, very uh, captivated by your story. I want I want you to tell your story. And, and, you, know, question on. and you know, sir, uh, I would never forget. I'm going to say it was June 23rd, 2020, when the government okay. finally came out and said that it's true. Mm-hmm. So I'm, interested, I I, I, I'm interested in you. So you're in Antarctica okay. at, at this base, and you're ta you're, were, were you taken by space people? It's okay to say it if it, that's true. Um, Disclosure is now. This is the time. I was taken. Yes, sir. Okay. And what did they look like? Can you tell our audience what they looked like? Um, they look like humans, human beings of this yeah. world. Yeah. And they all, they came in different shapes and different forms. Mm-hmm. Were they taller than you, or were they the same size? What would you say? You have you had some of the um, some of them was the same size, and some of them was taller. I'm only about five four, five five. Okay, okay, interesting. And were they wearing space uniforms or regular clothing? Where when that you where, where where were you when they when you were taken? Were you taken into the inner earth by them? Say that again. This is very very important. So don't be afraid to say it. 
Were you taken on board a spaceship into the inner Earth? Correct. It's okay to say it. Correct. I, I kind of knew. I already know that. So, Correct. What, tell us what it was like when you were taken. You don't have to be very specific how you were taken into the Earth. Want to keep that protected because the space beings that live there probably want to be protected too. But when you got into the inner Earth, what was it like there? Can you tell us? Peace. You peace. see, peace. On mm -hmm. your way there, on your way there to that peace, you see like, like different colors. Like, I just, I, I. Mm. Take your time. It's like, you see, your 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 body is like at peace, but you're still aware of things mm -hmm. that's going around. You see colors, you see different things. Mm. Now, like I said, the 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 people that I've seen is not what you see on the TV and the movies. None of that. None of that. Right. None of that. None of that. Yeah. Yeah, all that stuff is all fake stuff, anyone to Right. None of that. So I don't know. I held on this for I held on this a long, long, long and when I when I started to talk about it, I started seeing people showing up around the lake in the back of my house fishing with white shirts and I mean, you know. And that's because yeah, I started yeah. talking. Right. But, go so, Yeah, so essentially, and, you know, we don't care about the government anyway. I, the government's been probably watching me since I've been long enough to be watched. And, uh, and me too. So and, they, me. You, you, and you too. And do you think I really care? Yeah, you know, they've actually tried to, in, to intercept my show here uh, within the last year. I, we don't care. You know, I, you know, they're, you know, let's put it this way. The government people are more afraid of people like you and me, and especially me, because I do a show that's really popular. I've been on radio for 21 years, busting right. the matrix and telling the truth, and I'm about cosmic truth, and you're about cosmic truth. I can tell just by talking to you. So I'm really interested. So when you were taken into the earth, did you get to see men and women? Did you get to see how they live? What happened in there? Is yeah, is it's civilization. Okay. It's civilization in there. Yeah. It's civilization. That's what it is. When you go into that, excuse me, when you go into that, that realm, it's civilization mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I ain't gonna never forget. I'll never forget that I, and this really messed me up because all I seen was ice, 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 ice. I done seen crevices. We had, a, we had to, um, um, like survival training, we had to, you know, make our own igloos and make all yeah. this stuff. And I'm telling you the stuff, and people think, you know, something is wrong with me, but they don't know the stuff that I have seen. They don't know anything. They have no clue. And I don't understand why. People feel like this is so hard to believe. Why do you think that when I'm telling you what I experienced as a right. 19, 20, 21, 20, from 19 to 22, I didn't yeah. understand why I was experiencing this. And yeah. why am I here? And, and, you know, it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of scientists. Hold on, hold on. I had a lot of scientists that was down there the scientists were down in the inner earth with you yeah you know no no we was down um in mcmurdo station again okay and i never understood and that's what got me in trouble because i started asking questions about why are these divers diving down in this water the di they had divers diving down in the ice water? Right. Why were they doing that when you went all the way into the inner earth with the space people? 
sir. <clears throat> like I say, when I started talking too much, that's when they say, okay, let's put her somewhere where it's less people. And they're not going to believe her. So that's when well, they yeah. say, hmm. Yeah. So the reason why I got you on here when you in your sentence said what happened, I believe you. I'm a contactee. When I was a kid, I had contact with space people, too. Right. Um, so I understand what you're saying. I can understand it. And I am completely understand it. As a matter of fact, you're just validating hundreds of people watching the show talking that I'm talking to somebody that went directly in a spaceship with space people into the inner earth. For the first time on this show, I've had you know, the first person that actually was there and went into the inner earth. I mean, this is, this is I believe you 1,000%. Uh, my audience does, and your story is still incredible. There's a lot to the story. So I'm really, I want to go back to the inner earth. You're, you're away for three days. You're missing for three days, but you're in the inner earth. Tell us about the inner earth. Tell us a lot about the inner earth. I okay, think we so, really want, yeah. So remember when I told you that, um, when I first went there in 1987, it was 24 hours daylight, and the next day it yeah. turned to, okay, so now I'm in this, this C-130. And, you know, they have the little windows and everything, so you leave from New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand. Everybody's, mm -hmm. you know, wrong. So what happened was, when I first experienced this, one of the uh, the guys that work, I, I forget what they can, that work on the plane, like a stewardess or whatever, Right. Asked me did I want to go up front in the pilot so I could see everything. Mm -hmm. Sir, we what, was what? we wasn't flying like you look up out in the sky right now, and, yeah. and, and we was going up. It's like something was drawing us. You see what you got right here on your thing? Yeah. That what I see. Those those three spaceships in the in the picture. Something was drawing us up, and to I've never known a plane to go straight up. I've never been on a plane to go straight up. So are you saying that the C one thirty was being lifted up by a spaceship? That's it's what okay I saw. To, okay, that's what you these. So you saw you're on the C one thirty. There's probably a big spaceship beaming you up. Uh, and remind uh, you, sir, and remind you, sir, this is my first time. I don't know right. nothing. I don't know. Uh, so right. that's how I know when I seen what I first seen when I went and when I seen what you, you you have right here. Yeah. And then when I started to experience. Yeah. McMurdo Station. And then you sent me to Bear Service Camp. You thinking that it's not going to happen? Are you crazy? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, are you crazy? It's gonna cause now I'm alone. And and I didn't and I still fight it to this day, but the uh, the other guy that was a CB that was always outside with me, he yeah. told me he, he said you've been missing for three days. I'm thinking he cuckoo. So I go and ask the other fellas. They ever seen they saw me when I was laying out there on this fuel uh water bed like a bladder. Right. But I came up missing for three days. Right. So you were you were taken somehow by the space people, you know, somehow, however they did it, they you were contacted by them and they took you into the inner earth in the spaceship. When you got into the inner earth and I, I still want to go back in there like we're there. Um, can you tell us about the civilization of people there? Did they have cities? Did they have homes? Yes. Um, yes. yes. Outside that I it's a whole nother world. A whole nother world. Tell us about the other world. Tell us a little about their world within our own planet. What is their world like? People want to know. It's it's just like our world, but not not um all this negativity. It's just yeah. like our world. Mm -hmm. But their technology is you, there's no no signs that nobody can do anything with their technology. Mm -hmm. And do the space people there look younger than we do on the surface? They are. They come 
in all different, uh, I would say looking at them, everybody's not the same age. They, it's, it's like you and I. Right. Yeah, they're, 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 they are people. We don't call, want to call them humans, but they are people. They're people. Do they have I mean, on the, this, did you ahead. see on the inner earth, did, is there a sun? Admiral Bird said there was a sun within the earth, like they have their own atmosphere. It's way different. Uh, it's like a whole different vibrational frequency. What did you, you see? Atmo- yes, sir. What you say? Yes, sir. You yes, spoke the to sun? Yes. 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 Sun Admiral in- Bird said it, and he, that way, yes. Yeah. So you saw what Admiral Byrd wrote in his diary. You saw a sun and a blue atmosphere, correct? The atmosphere is nothing but water. There's no such what? thing as the atmosphere is nothing. Can you explain what you mean by that? The atmosphere is nothing but water. That's what we all surround. Let me turn this. Here. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, that's all it is. That's yeah. all it is. And were there other types of uh, marine life there? Did you see different marine life that that's different than what we have on our surface world? Um. Or no. No, because everything I seen, everything I seen is um uh, pretty much we seen it here. You know the um. Uh, the penguins, the seals, the, uh, right. pretty were much. There any, like, someone's asking if there were any dinosaurs or anything like that in the inner earth. If they, if it, if they are, I didn't see that. Okay. I didn't right. see that. What I saw was a universe like we're in now. I like it was like trees and it was like. Are you the same the universe that we in now? Yeah. Did you see any uh one of the people's asking, what about mermaids or mer people? Did you see those in the No, I, I didn't see that. Now I can't okay. tell you. And I don't think the mermaids would be in that water because it's so cold. Yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. didn't see no mermaids. Okay. Fair enough. Um hmm. what was the ship like when you're in the ship? Hey, they took you into the inner earth. Can you tell us what the inside of the spaceship was like? <laughs> really, once on the inside, all you're looking yeah. at is like you're in a doctor's office, you know, lights. You yeah. know, you have you have the blindness of the lights, but depending on which way you look, you might can see. Um depending on you know what I'm saying, depending on yeah. which way you look, you may see someone or you make because of light they're gonna have them lights bright in your in your eyes yeah why is that i mean why is the light bright in your eyes can you explain i think because they're looking into your soul hmm interesting comment i really believe that i think that Mm -hmm. because why would why would the lights be so bright and you know mm-hmm. just like looking at the sun you look too yeah. long your eyes get so if the lights are that bright you know yeah. it's gonna if you move your head back and forth it's gonna take time to you know to see something mm. Mm. but Interesting. Um, yeah but like i said they they look they look like us only and only they they look like us is all i can yeah. say no, I believe that. And my audience here, my guest, and give me your first name again. Michelle, but don't tell Michelle. nobody. I'm just playing. Gonna, <laughs> I know, I won't tell nobody. Michelle, nobody. No, I'm just kidding. Right. Uh, but, <laughs> and so Michelle's our guest. For people late, who are coming in late, this show is being recorded. It'll be on my YouTube channel by tomorrow, Astro Command Spaceship News. And Michelle was in Antarctica, missing for three days for people that just came in here. She physically went in a spaceship into the inner earth and what she's telling us is her story about what happened and it's an amazing story and uh it's this is what disclosure is about everybody this is this is somebody sharing their truth when they were in the navy and were taken into the inner earth so can you tell us about 
the people there? Did you see children? They're just mostly adults, or what did you no, see? No, I didn't see in? any children. No, because it felt like it was in a uh, like the uh, emergency room. You know what I'm saying? Emergency. Like you, yeah, like you're laying on the the bed, right. and you have this bright light in your face, and people are standing around you, and you don't know what they say. Right. So there are people around you. You didn't get to explore their part of the you didn't get to go out and explore their homes or meet people. No, not at that time. Okay. Not at that time. But did you get to do it in the future? Yes. That's when they sent me to Bear Service Camp. And so tell us tell us about that. Um, Bear Service Camp, like I said, is an isolated um, camp, and it's between McMurdo Station and the South Pole. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they only come there, stop through there to um, gas up to go. It's like a halfway point between those right. two. Right. And. There's, there's not, when I was there, like I said, it was me and maybe six, six other guys. Yeah. And it was just an isolated place. Right. But when you, when you went from being in this lit, uh, lit up area where you couldn't really explore anything. So at some point, uh, were you able to explore more of where people live? The sit did they have, like, uh, they have cities in the inner earth? No, you said what? Oh, say it again. Yeah, in the inner earth, Admiral Bird said there were there were I think cities, and there were also uh, okay. people living that were vegetarians, and he talked about this in his diary. What after you got through uh, the initial people around you, were you able to explore at any point in the three days you were missing uh, areas of the inner earth yourself? Not cities, but a city. I didn't a see city. Yeah, I didn't see city yet. I didn't see. I saw a city. Tell us about that. Tell us about that city. You have trees. You have rocks. You have everything we have here. You have the same thing. There's nothing different. It's the same hmm. thing. There's nothing different. I'm trying to tell you what I know. There's yeah, nothing yeah. different. I've seen it. I know what I'm talking about. There's yeah. nothing different. But it's the difference is that they live in a more natural, harmonious state down there in terms and, of the inner and, earth. And why do you think that every um, country has a play in it? Every country. Yeah, well, nobody well, owns Antarctica. Nobody. Yeah. Right. Why is that? Why, did, why do you think all the countries have a play in Antarctica? Because they know what's going on. Right. And they know. Do you, would you say that the the world governments like the United States don't want people learning about the truth of Antarctica, which you're telling right now? And that's what I'm telling you because yeah. you can't go there unless you, because um, the military is no longer there. You can't go there unless you can get a job. And um, when you apply for that job, oh, they're going to mm -hmm. take you through some things. Oh, they're going to mess with your mind. Mm-hmm. They're gonna take you through some things. So, mm -hmm. if it think about this, if you can't, if no one can come into your house, have no clue what's going on. They got all all these countries has a part of Antarctica. Come on now, yeah. Come on now, all these countries, not one, every last one of them has a part in Antarctica. They're trying. But they don't to want but these governments, the governments don't want the public to connect with the beings that live in Antarctica, correct? That is correct. They that want to is. keep it. They want to keep it separated from really something they really have no right to do, folks. Is that the beings that live in Antarctica, the space people that live there, that are highly living in peace and harmony? This is something I've known for a long time, and what you're saying, Michelle, is absolutely true. They are trying to prevent us from having contact with the people in the inner earth, which is really wrong. Exactly. They have no right to do that. Exactly. Exactly. Because you don't know any other continent that every country has a part in. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you're hiding something. And when I discovered it, oh, now nah, you got to go. We got to put you somewhere so you can't spread this message. Right. They want to try to stop you. But the thing is, you're on encounters, and now the whole world knows, and they can't stop you. Your message will be heard everywhere, all over the planet. And it's everywhere. been, and it's been hurt. It's been, it's, oh. But like I said, I'm just glad I can, after all these years, I'm 56 years old, and I waited all these years, and I didn't, I didn't get my 100% of disability because I couldn't tell anyone. Mm. And the day that that came out, I was free. I was yes. free to say, but that, like tonight, now what's tonight? We on Wednesday, I guarantee you by Friday. Yeah. It's going to, they going to be, and I used to tell my son, I said, I know everybody that lives around here. I've been here all these years and yeah. people are showing up because yeah. I was talking about it. So I never, even my kids didn't know my story Yeah. because I didn't want no harm to come to anyone that I told mm. my story to. Right. Well, you know, the one thing I will say is, uh, you know, the government beware because the drone encounters the whole world is hearing your story. It's going to be on YouTube by tomorrow. The whole world on YouTube is going to hear your story. I want to thank you so much uh, for sharing your story because the people need to know the truth. And I, people that know me, I don't care. You know, I don't, I'm not afraid of the military, the Navy, or any of the cosmic top secret people in any of the levels of government that have been lying to the public about Antarctica, about the space people coming to Earth. Uh, I, I, we've told the story here. People know that, uh, and Michelle, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you'll keep following our show. There's five of us, one of which has been going off planet for over 80 times up in Vermont, and we're going to be contacted and taken off planet between now and next year, and we're yep. going to come back. And these, yep. are space, these are our space family. Yep. I'm very connected with the space people, so, yep. you know, uh, you know what I'm talking about, so yes, there's sir. a lot going on here. <laughs> yes, sir. You know? You're absolutely right, but I I I came across your uh, page a couple of times, and but I didn't stay or whatever. But when I tonight I decided, you know what, I gotta I just gotta put it out there. It is what it is. I know what I experienced at 19 years old, mm -hmm. and can't nobody tell me that I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong. You know what? And I I actually support you 100 percent as host of the show. Uh, you are now, uh, you're telling the whole world the truth. You felt comfortable enough to come on here, and I honor you. I thank you for doing that. It, this is something people need to know. I was waiting for the day on this show. Somebody who was at Antarctica would actually have been taken into the earth and come on my show, and you're the person that actually t was the one. And I think it's, it's amazing. It's a beautiful story. Even though you were, you weren't abducted, you were taken by space people. And uh, were they both men and women, or did you see a mixture of people, or what was that like? It was men and women, but and it was women. mainly it was mainly more men than yeah. women. To me, it felt like the women was just standing back, making you know, just looking. Right. At, you know, that's what it said. But it was more men mm -hmm. around me. The, the women were standing in the background. Yeah. And were they wearing like space outfits of different colors or regular outfits or what would you say? They it was they didn't have on any outfits. It was like their bodies. Their bodies. Yeah. Well, they they didn't wear any clothes or anything. No, they didn't have any clothes on. That's they interesting. Did, yeah, they didn't have any at that time with me. They didn't have any clothes on. Hmm. There was no clothes on. It felt like I was in a hospital room and like the doctors were standing over me and they had me the clothes on. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, do, from your perspective, did you feel this was a positive experience? You said there are many different types of people or beings that look human. Did you feel like you were being taken and being abducted or do you think you were being educated about the inner earth? Educated. Okay. I was being educated to see things that a lot of people don't get to see. 
I was yeah. I was educated. It was no harm or, or I didn't feel them like doing anything to me. It was just mm -hmm. I wasn't afraid. It was just like peaceful. And I'm looking around like I'm in the hospital mm -hmm. bed, like, you know, I'm just looking mm -hmm. around, but I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid of them. But like I said, it was like the bright light was in my eyes and I started mm -hmm. to look around. That's how I could tell you the the women. And I think it was two females and they just stood off to the back to watch. But I don't I can't remember if they did anything to my body or not. I just know that mm -hmm. I was in peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't say they harmed me because I don't remember if they did or I don't, I can't say they, no, they didn't do anything to me. Let me ask you a question. Well, Red Jen's right. Why were you on a table? No, I was, I, when, when I was on the, um, like a hospital bed, not a table. A hospital bed. Okay. Yeah. So on the hot, so why were you in a hospital bed? Did, did they tell you? No, sir. They wasn't even talking to me. It was like they, it was like doctors standing. So let's say we got one, two, three, say four doctors, different, you know, jobs or whatever, standing over you, talking about you like you're not even there. Yeah. So that's what that was about. They didn't say anything directly to me. And yeah. it was like they was just talking to each other. Yeah. So. Is it possible they were kind of checking you out, like as a you know a, as an above ground human being? Uh, did they do anything to you that you realized, or not, or anything you you were experience, experiencing that way? I think the only thing they did to me was enlighten me. Enlighten you. So that's an interesting thing. So <laughs> I know my audience. I'm very interested in this. So when you say enlightened you, how did they do that? Like, sure. <laughs> like showing me what what's real yeah like 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 this like showing me let me see how I can put it. like showing me what's to come showing me mm -hmm. do you understand what I'm saying it was like yeah yeah, yeah. they were showing you th so they were sh they were trying to show you things about where they came from correct Mm. Or no, or not, or not, or maybe not correct. No, uh, no, I think they was they were showing me what the future looks like. They were okay, so they were showing you a projection of the future. Right. Now, when they say that, that's interesting. So, how did they show you a projection of the future? Did they have like a, a screen or something? No, it was like. Out of the four of those, because like I said, the two women, was in me, out of four of those, one of them showed me, I guess, what you call it, telepath, what, whatever that word is. Telepathy, telepathy. Okay. One of them, not all of them, and he might have been, I mean, two on the right, if I'm laying down, two on the left. Mm -hmm. the, one, the one on the right, the second one on my right, if I'm laying in the hospital bed. Mm-hmm. He starts to talk, and it was like in my head, I couldn't hear his voice through my ears. Yeah, it was telepathy. Right. So, okay. So what did what did that one say to you? Telepathic communications and words in your consciousness. Um. It was like, it wasn't really what he was saying. It was really what he was showing me. So tell us, what was he showing you? That's interesting. Like, what's pretty much what's going on right now. The world. No, no, so our world. Were they it's, showing you like the future of what our world would be like or what, or what we already know is happening? But we already know it's happening and everything is destroying the world. So mm, it was pretty much showing 
because there wasn't no no speaking. It was like a mind thing. And just I'm seeing stuff that I see now that was telling whatever that was, that was sent to me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it so, was, it was, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to say uh, to my moderators and myself that we are definitely keeping it. Well, our show is really high quality, so if there's anybody in here, and this is what we do with every show, if anybody comes in here trying to troll the show, I want my moderators to either block them or mute, actually block them. Don't even mute them, but continue on. They can try to troll me if they want to, but I know what I live to. No, no, no don't worry about it. Uh, I have to control this show as host, but go ahead. And what I went through still, I ain't going to say affect me, but it's still, because uh, it didn't affect me. Well, it probably did. It made me a different person than who I am. Because now I see things more like brighter, if I can right. see. You know, oh, it's yeah. like, and I don't know. I don't know. Now, let me ask you a question. This is one of my, uh, a couple of you asking a question. Do you still have telepathic communications with the space people from Antarctica in the yes. inner? They don't, I, do. I don't know. I don't know if they're from Antarctica. So I can't say it because my experience right. in, Antarctica, in Antarctica was then. I still have contact. So I can't say it made contact from here. Right. But I, I, I won't say it contact from Antarctica. I, I can't okay. say that. So when you say you still have contact, let's explore that too. Mm -hmm. When you say con contact with who and and what and what's the contact? Is it physical? What is it? Um let me see. Since I lived there in eighty, I lived there in nineteen ninety one. Um 1991, what year was this? Was it physical? Let me think. 2008? Might have been 2008. Okay. I'm living, yeah, because I was living here then. To the, and yes, I've had one, one now to actually mm -hmm. come down and I look at, and I say it's a him. I don't know. I looked at it, and it looked at me, and I turned my head back to look what, what I was doing, and it was no longer there. It didn't come to yeah. harm me. Now, there was no bright lights, no none of that. So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? There was no yeah. spaceship, any of that. Yeah. And, but Telepathically, they speak to me. But I can't tell people that because what they say, oh, she crazy. No, not here. You know, on my show, everybody comes on that with word, like people are going to think I'm crazy. You're now in the limelight of your life, your unencounters. Nobody here is going to think you're crazy. And if they do, they're going to, and they're my audience, we're going to take you right out in 200%. We will knock you out of the show in two seconds. You won't but be able even to see if, but you know what? Even if they think I'm crazy, but they don't. Not here, I, right? But I'm just telling you, and this is the first time I've ever spoken. Yeah. About this, especially we're well, on live, you know, with someone. Right. And like I said, I don't share it a lot because I know that when I share it with other people. Yeah. I don't know if things going to happen with them. I know what happened to me. Yeah, let me tell you something. Know. Right, so I don't I, know. I, huh? I'm I'm very well protected by the Space Command of the Astro Command. That's who I'm from. We are the Christed beings of light that are men and women. Yes. So I, I am completely well protected. No one gets near me unless it's the Astro Command. No one gets near me. Right. I feel you. I'm with you. You're with me. There you go. Yeah. But okay, I'm about to go. Uh, good night. But if I catch you again, you, you know, I, I um, hopefully I can get through. But I'm only you speaking my, I'm only speaking my truth, and 
no matter what anybody says, I know <clears throat> it's and you and I are on the same page. People don't understand. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my audience is totally with you. Everybody in my audience loves you. I want you to be a regular, you know, follower of the show. Watch the show. You'll hear other people talk about their experiences. Um, you know, so yeah. You know, and I and I look at other people's videos and they're talking about <laughs> a place that they never been. How do you yeah. never been there? What are you talking hey, about? I see my friend Grace over here. <laughs> Good evening. You know, so yeah, so I want to thank you for sharing your experience in Antarctica. You're the first person I've had that was in the Navy that actually went into the inner earth. This show is being recorded. So if you missed half of the show, uh, everybody, the beautiful part is I have a YouTube channel. You'll be able to watch it there. And uh, it's going to be great. Thank you for being on here, Michelle. I appreciate your coming forward with the tr truth about your experience. This was an incredible story. Thank you. All right, sir. You have a good night. You be blessed. You too. All right. All right. And we're going to we're gonna bring this other person up. Let me see. Where are they? Russell Studios. You have to, first of all, let me just say, you have to be over 18. No children on the show. No vaping. No smoking. No drinking, no drunks, no cursing, no paranormal discussion. Uh, let's see what else. No paranormal discussion, no religion, and no politics. And Russell Studios is our next guest here on Encounters. We got on a little bit after 10 tonight. We got on early tonight. And uh, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Good to have, it's good to have you with us. Is, is Russell your first name? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's my last name. Oh, what's your first name? Jacob. Jacob, nice to have you with us. Uh, we've had quite an interesting show tonight, as we always do. Tell us about your experience and when it started. So, uh, this started, uh, back in, uh, 2000 and in, uh, in Afghanistan. Um, <laughs> so uh where do i start so we 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 had a lot of different patrols and stuff like that out out in the middle of nowhere and i remember it it started um i i was up on top of a hill mm -hmm. um at a um on a forward operating base mm -hmm. and um i remember seeing these these lights and um I, I asked uh, I, I asked the lieutenant um, to the right. I asked him. I said, uh, "I said, shit, did you see that?" And um, and he says, "Oh well, yeah, sir. That happens every single night." He said, "We just don't talk about that. We don't report it." And I said, "What? What do you mean? This happens every night?" Right. And this is, this is a thing because in military culture, there's a lot of people who, um, they will see something, but they don't want to report it. Right. If that yes. makes sense. Um, and, and so we've seen these guys off in the village and they were, um, they were shooting at something. They were shooting at these lights and, um, it was it was quite quite the experience um but that that's not the only experience but I, I remember this this was something that occurred on a regular basis um you know now when they were shooting at the lights did they when you say lights were they shooting at spaceships it, it would appear so like the, the like so i remember so um so i got my radio man um to, to call in to ask you know like do, do we have any assets in the area like is is that any of ours do we do we know what's going on do we see anything on on the radars and stuff like that um and the response i got back was negative no we don't have anything mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. that's not us like what are you talking about right they, like they're, they're like you right. know they're you know my boss is thinking you know my commanders are thinking i'm crazy Right. And then, mm -hmm. and, um, my guys are saying, uh, they said, well, see, sir, this is why we don't say anything. Right. Because now, right. now they're going to, now they're going to question you when you come back. Yeah. And sure enough, I got, I got sat down afterwards and they said, uh, what did you see out there? Right. Mm -hmm. And I told them what I saw and, 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 you know, how there was no, no sound or anything like that. Right. And, and they said, 
Well, I think it's just heat stress. You know, oh, wait a minute. It's heat was stress. it was was there that your commander telling you was heat stress? Yeah. 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 They said, well, you know, everybody sees these things. It's a normal thing. Don't worry about it. Um, just don't report it in the future. And so I, I thought that was kind of odd. And yeah, that's what they're basically trying to tell you not to say anything. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, don't say anything, but, but, you know, indirectly. Um, and, and so I got talking with the guys, you know, a couple of nights later and they said, um, you know, they've seen entire battles with 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 spacecraft and stuff like that because out there over the desert it's very um uh, like there's not a lot of light pollution yeah you know and 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 so 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 the thing is 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 you can see you can see for a very long for a very long distance um with with very little light pollution yeah and um and so, so fast forwarding a, a, um, a few years later uh, to yeah. 2012, um, I was uh, I was in British Columbia, uh, Canada, and I, I I was called in to to take a look at a strange radar reading that they they had picked up or whatnot and captured. So I'm I'm looking at it, and. Uh, and now this is a recording. Um, yeah. So so I'm looking back at it, and um, we see these these six objects that uh, that, that came from from the uh, from the west from the Pacific, and it seems like they came out of nowhere, right? Yeah. And they flew across at a, roughly about eight thousand kilometers an hour, wow. which is ridiculously fast and it, they came to a complete stop within a fraction of a second oh, wow. now, i don't know anything you know i i know a lot about various different military projects and stuff like that and i don't know of anything um the, the no, nothing human that we have right the capability to f f with those type of g-forces you know yeah absolutely um, absolutely yeah huh. yeah and so and and so i remember um these objects ended up um turning and, and heading towards the united states and um so the u.s air command they ended up taking over um over that as well so so um, the u.s air command when they were heading these objects were heading oh they decided to head towards the u.s these unknown objects the u.s air command took over it why did they take it over because they were heading towards the U.S. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. They, so, so they took they took over um, as it uh, as as the objects um, went over U.S. airspace. Really? Did they have fighter jets that were uh, trying to intercept them? Um, from my understanding, yes, um, but mm -hmm. I, I, I I'm a little unclear as to exactly okay. what happened right. once they crossed over. But mm -hmm. uh, from my understanding, yes, I know we did. Um, yeah. But uh, but but when when they, the strange thing is, okay, so so this happened not at nighttime. This happened in broad daylight. Broad um, daylight. Mm hmm. And yeah. when our when our fighters went up into the air, they saw nothing. I mean, they 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 you know the, the planes um, had independent contacts um on their instruments but the um uh you know they couldn't make a visual yeah which is interesting so we had yeah, yeah, independent from the ground and from the air mm -hmm. um so so and i remember calls frantic calls being um called around the office and stuff you, you know like hey whose is this whose is this you know do you know do you know no you don't yeah. know it's uh, not yours it's not here? yours were, yeah. were these uh, were these UFOs or spaceships cloaked at any time where they couldn't be detected on the radar? Um, so so here's the thing. So um, now that our um, our radar has um, essentially been been receiving a lot of different upgrades, different technology stuff like that, yeah. I find that we have been seeing them more often. So yeah. I almost wonder. Um, I almost wonder that like. If our old technology, our older technology, 
um, had had a harder difficulty mm-hmm. um, trying to find these objects or track them. Um, and and now, like I almost feel I almost feel like um, you know, like people say, you know, uh, well, they, these sightings are increasing; they're increasing. But right. I think my my personal opinion is is that just our our technology is getting better. Our cameras are mm-hmm. getting better, um, and you know, there's more people out there um, able to see these things. Right. So I don't, I don't know if I, they were cloaked or if they've just yeah. got incredible technology that um, shields it from that. And when uh, you had these experiences, did any of the people there have any physical encounters besides, you know, the fact that they were shooting at these objects uh, that were in the daytime sky? Anybody have any? Uh, visitations or anything uh that that you know of so so i i don't know this from firsthand but um i i was speaking with a a buddy of mine um he since retired now um Mm -hmm. and um he he said he was working at um at um uh Canadian Forces Base uh, Suffield which is a large airfield um in southern Alberta okay um, and so what he said is that there's an underground facility there that most people don't know about. Um, in fact, I didn't even know about that. I, I said, you gotta be kidding me. I said, I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, and he said, well, they don't, <laughs> they don't exactly advertise it. Um, right. but, uh, what he said is that he can't tell me exactly what transpires there because he, you know, he was worried for right. his family and stuff like that. Right. But he said, I know 100% and I would bet my life that uh, I can guarantee that uh, that they are real and that we are working with them. Said, but I so, can't say much more than that. But he said a whole lot just by saying he that. Said he a whole said, lot and I was like, he, and he I said, said so. Yeah, I said. So what? What could be? What could be more than that? Right. He, and he said, "You don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know." But he said a bunch of stuff. In one sense, he said, "We're working yeah. with them," meaning that so underground in that in that facility. Whereabouts is this now? Uh so this is in um, uh, southern Alberta. Southern Alberta, somewhere. There's this base that's probably a multi-level facility. Correct. Yeah, yeah, from my understanding, yes. Right. And in that multi-level facility, they're working with certain extraterrestrial intelligence, probably, and whoever know what I who knows who they are, but they're they're working with the Canadian government, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean it's not just the Canadian government, but, but they're many working with governments. probably the US is involved and probably Russia and everybody else is. Mm-hmm. From so I spoke to another person that told me a bit more. Um, I think he's dead now, um, but uh, he used to be the uh, defense minister, Paul Hellyer. I don't know if you've oh, heard Paul of Hell, him. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, great guy. Um, so, so I had the opportunity to, to speak with him um, and and kind of pick his brain at that. I said, I said, uh, you know, like how much do you know about all of this? Right. Yeah, and yeah. he said he told me he said not as much as I would like to know. <laughs> not as much but, as I'd like to know. Yeah. 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 So I guess from what I understand is they kept a lot of a lot of secrets from him. Um, but uh, but anyways, fantastic guy. He he. Um, what he told me is that from his understanding that they are they as in you know the government. Um, them and private corporations as well are working on various different um, genetic experiments and different mm. um, st- stuff based on um, oh, what's the wording um, like mm. reproductive like reproductive um, genetic right. uh, stuff like that cloning or cloning maybe yeah yeah Not things cloning. like that something like that okay that and genetic manipulation yeah. Mm. And apparently there's some sort of deal that um, uh, be, be between between a certain race of aliens and and the government um, that the government helps them out with, you know, genetic research or whatnot. Um, 
and 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 apparently apparently so i don't know if this is like i said i i, I don't know if any of this is true but right um from what he was saying is that essentially um there's there's the race that the the people commonly refer to as as the grays um the the zeta the zeta working the zeta have been working with the u.s government for over Mm -hmm. 70 years yeah so what he was saying is that they also uh, apparently also work with the canadian government um and that uh, apparently that they are incapable of reproducing um right like sexually um and and that their genetic code or something something like that has broken down or uh, so, so, something to so, something to that effect and so yeah. a lot of the what he explained is that um from his understanding a lot of the experiments that goes on um involving uh, uh you know encounters or abductions or whatnot right um right. are specifically related to um to genetic research um and um the the the, the interesting thing about that is it seems like the part of this deal involves technology um yes it does with the with the private sector um and the military um and the the there's some sort of deal i guess that allows them to uh you know abduct so many people so many humans or whatever from various different territories or whatnot um right. per year or something like that there's some sort of quota or acceptance right so where isn't they turn it amazing that eye. there's a there's an actual quota that the zeta can abduct people in canada and there's a certain quota they have to stay by in agreement with the canadian government or the people in top secret security clearance yes. with those people it's pretty amazing isn't it yeah yeah it's, it's, it's diabolical it is diabolical and yeah it really is it's sad but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I didn't see any of this, um, you know, firsthand. But I, I spoke to a lot of great people and people that I trust, and yeah. um, and and you know, and they and they told me absolutely this is going on. Um, yeah, no, it is. Mm-hmm. And they're just trying to gaslight everybody, and you know, they, and and so part of it is, um, you know, I was I was speaking to a military police officer about about this. Um, and and what he told me is some of this stuff where where you see the government doing a really horrible job, you know, like some some, some people say, well, it, it could be a false flag or it could be misdirection, and they're just trying to put out these things and make people think aliens are real or whatever because they're got some other agenda. But the the thing is is um, having been in the military and having been um, working alongside government um i can tell you they're pretty incompetent a lot of the times they're pretty stupid um and and so a lot of times these things leak out and they didn't mean for it to leak out um but it leaks out anyway yeah but it leaks out anyways and then they just do a terrible job at covering it up well Um, when it leaks out they try to cover it up and that makes it even worse because now it's leaked out that people know they're lying Mm-hmm. Whatever government it is that's trying to cover it up, right? Yeah, yeah, and it becomes yeah. ten times worse. Yeah, and and I worse. think that's I think that's not done on purpose. I think that's just government being government mm-hmm. the way it is. Yeah, I think it's just you know they're very sloppy with things. Oh yeah, I mean you know the U.S. government, you know they have their own organization. They talked about disclosure. They talk. They have their site. You never see updates on the U.S. government site. I don't know if it's still up anymore. But it was an attempt to say to the public and the U.S. hearings in Congress that we are, you know, we're now coming uh, with uh, disclosure. We want to get to the truth. The fact of the matter is don't trust any government, Russia, U.S., where I am, or Canada. Nobody wants to get to the truth in the governments. They want to try to kind of placate people and make us all go about our lives, paying our taxes, watching, you know, some game shows at night and maybe football games. And they can keep control and keep this whole thing under the lid. But there is some stuff happening in a year and a half on this uh, above this planet that none of these governments are aware that they can do. They know it's happening. There's going to be direct contact by the positive space people that are coming here now. And I know about this because I'm part of that group. Mm. Yeah. What's, so what's interesting about that is, um, 
you know, I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of people within the Air Force and from my understanding, there is some sort of, you know, like galactic war or something like that that's going on. Um, and, and, and that's why a lot of the uh, NASA photos and stuff like that are scrubbed and, and, and heavily edited and stuff like that. And yeah. what's, what's interesting is um, everybody thought that um, uh, that Trump was crazy when he said he wanted to create a space force. Right. Because it's just, it sounds crazy. Right. But then you start to think, well, why? Right. So you have to ask the question is why do they need a space force? Right. And it's because, um, you know, the air force and, and the Navy, you know, they, they can't handle, um, they, they can't handle these, these new threats. Right. What they call a threat. So they and you know they create this space force which does exist. You mm-hmm. want to know why they created it? They there it's been it started with Reagan with the Star Wars program. And when we spoke to the United Nations, he said, and it's on recording, he said, What if there was an alien threat? And I remember I the remember words that. exactly. Now what do you think the Space Force folks was started? So this is Commander Allen, the host of the show. And uh, what do you think it was started? Now, here's the deal. It was not started to protect us from nuclear bombs from Russia or China. Yeah. It was created to try to attack peaceful space people that are coming here in another year and a half. And the, the Space Force is there to try to prevent them from making contact with the people of this planet. I'm telling people the truth here. I know this is the truth. That's why mm-hmm. they created the Space Force. Without any any hesitation in my, in my mind here to say this, I know that's the reason why they created it. They didn't create it for like protecting us as a new space force against a nuclear missile coming from China or something. If you believe that, then you're being, you know, you're fooled. No, that's the Air Force and Navy's uh, job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> has right. nothing to do so with what do you, space What do you think force. about what I said, though? Do you think, uh, I mean, I know this is why they created it. What's your perception of the space force? Well, absolutely. I think I think I think that well, first of all, I think that they were that the Space Force was created a long time ago. President Trump did not right. create the Space Force. Right. Um, it, it existed already. It existed already. I think what what he did was bring it to light, right? Like publicize it. But it has been right. in existence uh far longer. Um I believe that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. I think. See, like the thing is, is, is it's a, it all comes down to control. And the 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 thing is, is um, wouldn't it be great if we had an alien invasion and then the government can come to save us? <laughs> right, right. That that that's their scenario. And there are no mm-hmm. aliens. It's basically that's an Earth based terminology from the media. There is actually non-terrestrial intelligence of different vibrational frequencies. The ones that the Zeta operate in a lower vibrational. A frequency the star people they operate in a very loving frequency and um yeah and and this is a thing i'm connected with uh i mean if you're new to the show i'm glad you're here but we have people that are i have a friend of mine in vermont she's been off planet over 80 times with our space family they're human beings they're about seven eight feet tall i know i have uh we all have biological earth families one of the new revelations is to learn for people for me to teach is that we also have, uh, if we believe that we're star seated, that we come here from somewhere else to be here and we don't remember, I do remember, I have, you know, she has siblings on the spaceship that are men and women, they're human, they're very loving people and they're here to help our planet. And there's gonna be a lot of major things going down and the space force is probably gonna be used to try to lie to the public about what's gonna be happening but it's essentially the space force is going to be shut down. The space people have more ability to shut down nuclear power plants. They can shut down everything, including all the electricity in every city in the planet, if they wanted to. Hmm. No, I I agree, and I I actually I actually do believe in the um uh, the you know, planet seeding um, theory. Um, I I I I absolutely believe that. Um, you know, we didn't originate here. Um, you know, there's there's yeah. quite a bit of evidence to support that as well. Oh yeah, you. Know, I hope you'll watch my show a lot. We have a thing on Saturday, not this Saturday night. 
we're doing in the U.S. a gathering on the water in the Long Island Sound here in the U.S. We have a uh, CE5 active active group uh, that will be broadcasting live, and we're going to try to make contact visually with positive uh, space people, with positive spaceships over the Long Island Sound. We're going to be doing that Saturday night here on my TikTok on Encounters. So we're getting our group together. We're well trained in the area. All of us have had experiences, and so we know what we're doing. It's going to be interesting. I had an interesting experience once when I was when I was a kid, but um, and it's 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 hard to remember. I was about ten years old, and I remember I remember waking up. And, you know, I dismissed this as a, as a, as a bad dream a long time ago, yeah. but now I, I, I wonder if there was more to it, but mm. I, I remember waking up and seeing this entity, this being or whatever, um, you know, standing by my bedside and mm. I remember, um, floating and, mm. and, 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 and like above my bed mm-hmm. and, and screaming for for my mother but i couldn't it was like i was paralyzed i couldn't i couldn't yeah. couldn't scream i couldn't get any sound out nothing mm. and i remember hearing um like a like a like 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 almost like te- telepathy and, yeah and 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 hearing like a, a voice saying uh like to be quiet right mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. And I, I remember, I, I remember a vague feeling. Now this is a long time ago, but I right, remember right. a a vague feeling of you know um, going going somewhere. I can't I can't quite recall, but but I I do remember this feeling of seeing the Earth like many different places, places I've never been. Um, right. places I still haven't been, um, yeah. Yeah. some places I have been now, um, yeah. but, but I remember seeing the earth pass by me underneath me, uh, at a, at an extremely high rate of speed and then slowing down and coming to wow. a, a full stop and seeing everything in detail. Um, but as if I was hovering, maybe, um, I want to say like maybe, 25 to 50 meters above above cities and different places yeah. wow yeah you know, and i think i think that was probably you were meant to to think it was a dream i've heard these stories before i'm going to tell you that you weren't dreaming they wanted you to think you were dreaming when in fact yeah. you were actually being taken yeah, they told me, they said, well, it's just sleep paralysis. It's a trick of the brain, just a bad dream, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the weird thing is, though, is is seeing these places around the world where future me, um, you know, went and, and visited. And, and I had a deja vu of like, oh, man, I've been here before. Right. You know? right. And, and, and clearly I had never been there before. Um, yeah. It's our, it's our consciousness. You know, sometimes our human brain, uh, through what we call the 3D brain, uh, tries to say, no, that didn't happen. But the inner part of us, if we go into the inner part, which I talk about, and what I've done in my workshops in Connecticut, is when I take people on journeys, I tell them to turn the brain off in order to get to the source of the journey. The brain has to be turned off or the brain will interfere and tell you, no, this didn't happen. So in mm. your story... The brain is saying to you, well, you know, but in truth, you know, in your heart that you had this experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's know, very hard to do. describe. And, you know, people, yeah. people thought I told a few friends and they thought I was nuts. Um, <laughs> but uh, the other thing was, too, is a few years later, I, I discovered this, um, uh, this, this, this metallic, like, um, I don't know how to ex- explain it. Like, a like an object or something. Yeah. Or? Like almost like the size of a, uh, like a grain of rice in okay, my, tiny. in, yeah, in my knee. And so anyways, they, um, I, I, I went, 
went to the doctor and mm-hmm. you know they they looked at it and they said well they said oh it just looks like a rock or something got into your knee and right. i said well i said but there's no you know there's no scrape there's no wound there's nothing and the doctor looked further and he said yeah that's very strange he said i don't i don't see any scarring nothing he said, I, I don't know how that got in there so we can extract it if you want but uh right. you know, he said it would have to still, be. Do you still have, have the object, the little tiny thing? Uh, so when they took it out, I asked them if I could if I could take a look at it afterwards, and they said yes. And then when they extracted it, um, they they said, "Oh, we threw it away by accident." They threw it away. And they told me they threw it away by accident. Do you believe that? Not really. <laughs> do you think they do you think they threw it away or do you think they contacted somebody in the government? It's very po- it, it, I don't know, but it was very possible that they could have um contacted somebody but it, I I, I Yeah, I don't really, think they I don't think they threw it away. I, yeah, they didn't throw it away. Those doctors they didn't throw that thing away. They did something else. Mhm. And so it's, yeah. it's Batman, one of our people in it says it was probably a tracking device, and that's definitely plausible. That if it was put in there by ETs, it could have been it could have been totally in your that area to track you wherever you went. What's weird is even to this day, um, every since that instant, I always hear like this random like buzzing in my ears and stuff like that. Really, mm-hmm. really interesting. Um, do you think you have implants in your in your? In your up in your upper part of your head area or anything in there happening so it is so so interestingly enough um there was a um i i remember i remember um uh shaving my head once and i remember seeing uh you know my my partner um saw a um uh, like like a like a small lump or whatnot at the back of my head, mm-hmm. and the weird part is is that uh, I don't remember ever, um, you know I've had my head shaved like a million times because in the military yeah, yeah. you keep your head yeah. you keep your hair short, yeah. Um, and so the interesting thing is it's almost like I just woke up one day and had this almost like a bone spur at the back of my head but it just came it's like it showed up overnight it showed up overnight Um, and i remember i went to the doctor and got it checked out and they said oh there's no reason to do a scan they just felt it with their hand and they said it's nothing they said it's just um you know probably a spur or some some sort of yeah that's what they were saying right yeah so what happened after you went to the doctors and they said that to you well, the thing is, is I had buzzing in my ears and almost like a, um, you know, sometimes in one ear or whatnot. And then, and then immediately, uh, or not necessarily immediately after, but, but very shortly after, I would see some sort of UFO lights or something like that in the sky. Really? Interesting. Very shortly do you, after. Do you still have that in that part of your uh, head I area? I do, yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question. This is you don't know much about what I do here. How would you like me to take that out remotely from where I am right now? Well, that would be interesting. Yes, it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, how? Uh, so I'd like to do this for you. For folks watching my show for the first time, I'm going to reel some stuff about me. I'm from. I work. I I'm, I'm a human being. I have a regular job. I work like everybody else. I'm not from this planet. I've said it before, I said it on my radio show for 21 years. I am from off planet. I come from the Ashtar Command, which is the spiritual beings of light that are human. Uh, I came here on a mission to Earth when I was a kid. I met my space family uh, looking at my a cul-de-sac of my brother's room that were in light blue spacesuits. Uh, and uh, this is a true story. And I'm here doing what I do. I'm an intergalactic communicator off planet. I'm using Earth-based technology, which is what we have here, the cell phone, the TikTok. I use this to uh, do what I do. And I would like to help uh, you, and I would like to help uh, 
get the implant out of you remotely from where I am here. I'm going to show you. People who watch my show know that I can do this, and that's because I don't come from this world. So I'm going to do something that is going to blow your mind here. And I'm doing it not just to blow your mind because of your experience. Uh, We're going to uh, help you here. So I want you to close your eyes, please. I'm going to switch my consciousness now to my Ashtar Command consciousness, which is a little bit different. I'm going to be totally activated right now. As you close your eyes, please take a deep breath in and breathe out of your nose about three or four times. And there are people here who say that I can do it, and they know that I can do exactly what I'm saying right now. And when you're calm and relaxed, please let me know. Okay. Okay. Right now, I'm going to go into my Astro Command mode. I'm now fully going to activate myself. And what I wish to do now is help you. Uh, whereabouts is that area around the, the where this is? At the back of my head. Okay, we're going to work there. Keep your eyes closed, please. I'm going to get real focused. This might take a little bit of time, but we're going to do this. And I wish to dissolve this implant that was put in him and I wish to do that now I'm going to work on this area in a few minutes you'll be feeling a heat energy I actually feel um something yeah I'm just getting started it's like a warm feeling yes yes this is not going to hurt whatsoever we're going to take the implant out and dissolve the implant into nothing I'm getting close to the area I'm trying, I'm actually starting to pull it out. I hear a buzzing sound. And the beings that put it in you, I'm also going to block them from trying to stop this. They're not going to stop it. We're going to take it out. Out of my left ear, I hear a buzzing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to shoot a beam of light into that area. I use the palm of my hands, which are activated right now. For those watching this, what we're doing is a removal of an implant that is in his upper area. How do you feel right now? I feel relaxed. <clears throat> it was like a warm feeling at the back of my head. Yeah. That's weird. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna dissolve I'm gonna dissolve the uh, implant.
They can't stop me. The negative ETs are afraid of me anyway. The buzzing went away. Yeah, that's the buzzing is going away because the implant's going away. The buzzing was there because the implant was there. We're taking the implant out. Almost out. How does that area feel? It feels good. It feels good. Does it feel like it's going away where that thing was? Mm hmm. Yeah, we're taking it out. Wow. It's almost completely out now. Give me a moment. Now I'm going to use high beams of energy in that area, and it'll be dissolved in two seconds. Give me a moment. Okay. It should be totally dissolving. It's going to be completely, the molecular structure of that implant is going to be gone in, in, in another minute or so. How do you feel? Good. The buzzing stopped. <laughs> yeah. I That's destroyed crazy. the implant. I've destroyed the implant in his head. It's gone. Wow. For new people watching this show, like I said, I'm not from this planet. And I'm telling you the truth when I say this. I work from the Ashtar Command. I'm here on Mission Earth, and I'm here to help humanity. And that's my main reason for being here. I'm here to help the planet. There are many more people like me that are in human form that are fully activated. Wow. I'll never have interference again, brother. You're completely that's healed. That's the good thing I dropped into the stream. Yeah, I destroyed the implant. It's gone. The ETs that were interfering with you, they're not happy about it, what I just did, but they have no control over it because I'm now putting also one other thing. I'm putting a protection, a uh, beam of protection with the palm of my hands. I'm able to create it around you physically and around your environment. We're also doing, I'm doing a cleansing of any residual energies from them, of all your rooms in your uh, living space. Give me one moment. Your living space is now protected. I just put an energy a uh, vibrational pattern of higher vibrational energy into your living space. And uh, you're oh, definitely uh, in good shape now. Thank you. Yes. I want you to say these words because this is so important. When I do this kind of work with people here on the show at time to time, I'm still operating my Ashtar Command consciousness. Uh, please say that uh, this these words, these will also be words of protection. I am a cosmic Christed being of light. I'm a cosmic Christed being of light. I'm a cosmic Christed being of light. A cosmic Christed being of life. Light, and I will not be affected by any negative ETs any longer. I will not be affected by any ETs no longer. Yeah, negative ETs any longer. Negative ETs any longer. Okay, brother. Your, your stories are, are beautiful. You came out telling us some very, very important things, and you shared your personal experience. And I went into my Ashtar mode for people new to the show. I am able to do these things remotely, and I only do it when I need to do it. I don't just do it just for show. I do it for, for helping somebody. If I did it for show, it's not a show. I do it because what he went through with the implant, we destroyed the implant. The implant's gone. It's all been documented. My shows are recorded. This show will be on my YouTube channel by tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story uh, in the military where you were and all the things you stated. If anything else positive happens or if you get any more top secret information, uh, please come on and share it with us. 
I will do. Thank you. And I'm following you. I'm also following you as a new friend of the show. Let me make sure. Am I following you? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm following you. So I'm following you now. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Again, thank you for your service and your disclosure information about where you were serving. So thank you. All right. We're going to bring you down. Let's do this here. Okay. So for people that are new here, welcome. We'll be here till I think 1230 or one at the latest. Um, yeah. So this has been documented. Shelby, thank you. I destroyed the implant that was in his head. I totally destroyed it. Now, some, might, some people here might not understand how I am able to do this. Understand, I am not from this planet. Please understand that. I am human, but I am not from this planet. My consciousness has been activated. My space family has activated me, and I'm able to do these things. Okay? Give me a moment. And if anybody has a story they wish to share, please let me know. You have to be over 18. No kids on this show, no vaping, no smoking, no drinking, no drunks, no paranormal discussion, no politics, and no religion. And no trolls. If I see anybody trolling or laughing at people's stories, I will have personally block you from this program. Because this is a program. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for, for your gifts. Please show your support for what, uh, and no driving, of course, and please show your support if you love what we're doing here. Uh, we do this most nights at 11. We were on a little bit earlier tonight, and we're committed to our media project here. We do, we're do we doing radio for 21 years now on NPR Radio, uh, Cosmic Eye Asterisk Man Radio on NPR Radio, WESU FM. Your gifting is, held, uh, is definitely, uh, you know, I definitely thank you for gifting. So please do some gifting. Please follow. We have 437 people. Please follow me. Also, like, we have almost 100,000 likes shining. Thank you so much. You saw what I did just now. If you are amazed at what just happened, please show your support. Bonnie, thank you so much. Paula, thank you for your gift. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Your gifts mean a lot to me, you know. We put out 1,000% here for everybody. And so whatever support we get, we appreciate it. I'm just taking a moment to re recenter. Re uh, uh, Brenna, thank you. Uh, I don't know that I can take a cancer away from somebody, a dog. I have never tried to do that. I've been able to do implants and destroy them, but I don't know that I can destroy a dog's cancer. I'm not sure I can do that. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Kit Kat. Thank you. Vanessa, thank you, Jennifer. You know, it takes a lot of energy to do what I just did to destroy that implant, believe me. You know. Can I try to destroy a cancer? Let me meditate on that whole thing. I, let, I don't know. I don't know. My hands are warm. Uh, thank you, Diane. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, brother. Interesting spiritual abstract. That's interesting. We're almost at 100,000 likes. I'm enjoying every moment of the show, the interviews. And we're going to do some more interviews here. And uh, I will tell you, I know some people want to know about me. Simply T. We're going to bring Simply T on in a minute. But I just want you to all know that we're in good hands. Uh, there's a many, many things that are going to be happening soon. And you have to be prepared. As uh, my last guest said, the Space Force has been around way before any president of this country. The Space Force's purpose is not to 
protect us from conventional warfare. The Space Force's purpose is to try to prevent contact with the star people in a year and a half. That's what their that's what their purpose is. That's the main purpose. If any president or any prime minister tells you the purpose is to prevent conventional warfare, they're lying to you. Okay? They're lying to you. But we will be having contact in a year and a half. We're talking late 2025 and the 2026. Thank you, everybody, for making us up to 100,000. All the new people that are finding the show, I appreciate you. I know there's tons of TikTok things on there that you can look at, but this is an actual talk show. You don't see many of these things on TikTok. And I started this thing a year ago. Uh, I took my radio concept and brought it to TikTok, and that's when this show went viral. And uh, we're happy to be here. Thank you for the follow. I'm Madeline. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, Red Jen, that's interesting. We'll have to see. Where did you hear that? Where did you hear that, Red Jen, about the 14th and 15th of September? All I know is we're doing a sky watch on the 14th on the Long Island Sound. If there's going to be spaceships, we're going to record them. <laughs> interesting. Yes, Goldberry, definitely a lot of new people. Thank you, Helen. I appreciate your your compliment. A blessed mom. Yes, hope it's sooner. Michelle has implants. Where's Michelle? Michelle has implants. Where's Michelle? Is Michelle with us? Okay. Well, if Michelle is with us or she comes on, I'll help her out. It took a lot of energy to do one person. Oh, I think our government, uh, Blessed Mom, has been involved in 70 years of working and collaborating with the Zeta in terms of implants. That's been documented in most of the abduction cases. Uh, John Mack, uh, people like Bud Hopkins, who wrote many books on it. So, yeah, I, I, would, I would say yes to that fact. And I'm just reading comments here. I'm going to bring this other person up here. Let's see. Simply, let's see if Simply's still there. Ah, Simply's been very patient. I appreciate that. Hey, Simply. Hey, Ellie. Hey, how are you? It's been a busy night. How are you? Good, good. Um, yeah, I was listening for a bit um, and also going through... Um, I don't know if you've seen it, the um, the handbook that was handed out to law enforcement regarding how to deal with um, UAPs, UFOs, and so forth. Oh, yeah, there, there, there's protocol for law enforcement in terms of that for years. Yeah, well, they uh, if, if it if it was out for years, they just recently updated it. I have it. They must, have, they, it. They must have yeah. You have it? How do yes. you get a copy of it? I, I, I have friends. Okay, so let's talk about that. The <laughs> fact that the law enforcement now has a protocol of how to deal with extraterrestrial intelligence, that's mm -hmm. another whole thing that we're getting ready for disclosure, mm -hmm. but the government is just, you know, so they know something's coming, correct? Oh, they, they definitely know. Um, if I can get into it for a bit. So let's consider the, the events that, that have been taking place. None of this was by accident. None of it was by accident. These things may have seemed um, like it was by, you know, uh, it was a coincidence, you know, it just it just happened. Right. No, all of these right. things that have been occurring has been planned out. Um, I want you guys to go back to, you know, 2019, 2020 um, mm -hmm. during the lockdown. There were things going on in the sky. Um, things that they didn't want us to see. There's a reason why they asked for people to be in their houses when they were in their houses as well. There's, there's multiple reasons, multiple reasons why. Um, also consider the fact that they wanted you to stay six feet away from one another when you were around other people. Um, mm -hmm. That was not necessarily to prevent 
um, an infection that was when when in, any of you guys that know about the Taurus field, you know the Taurus field on someone that um, that the average person is about six feet, yeah. right? Yeah. So energy is a real thing. We do have a field around our body. They should have taught it in science, but of course they weren't going to teach it, right? Right. So right, you want right. to yeah, keep yeah. that in mind. So yes, you can look it up. It's called the Taurus field again. For those of you guys that have read the gateway experience it's in mm -hmm. that as well um now consider the fact also that you know all of these the increase in sightings and for those of you guys that can remember when we were all confined to the house you know um there was a quote-unquote air balloon spotted near canada that canada let the u.s take the lead and and taking care of that but they said it was just right. a weather balloon but it they said it's a weather balloon Yes, and 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 it wasn't just a weather balloon, but th that's no, what it they wasn't. Said. We, that was a that was a cover up. That was a cover up, but it's easy to cover up when everyone's in the house and no one can film. Um, right. So what's taking place now is that you have um, these apps. You have most of us have a camera or some sort of device that we can record on or go live, right? And that's why they're asking. Even in this pamphlet I have right here, they're asking for us to report things when we see it for law enforcement there there's even a section in here where they they want they talk about them being careful and radiation suits i'm like what um well, what are they talking about you know they're they're, they're assuming that the space people mm -hmm. and their ships are going to cause radiation and the only radiation is coming from the lower vibrational et ships not from the ones that are star people well the the intent is to make people be in fear of the et right. so Take into account, you guys remember the lady from the plane that said, hey, that, you know, that that MF -er isn't real. Um, you remember not too, you know, far after that, that they um, created this diagnosis called demon face syndrome. Now, yeah. mind you, that could have just fallen under the umbrella of schizophrenia, but they needed to name it demon face syndrome. So you take that into consideration. Also look at the fact that again, we had more, we had additional sightings. They had the congressional right. hearings. Now yeah. look at the fact that the Vatican updated the apparition guidelines. Right. So they're- And, and the Vatican people, and, the, and the Vatican even said there was no threat from extraterrestrials. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh yeah, it's, they, they did say that. And it's quoted by the Vatican uh, a while back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they it, it's here's the thing you have. There are different governments that have made deals with um, met with and made deals with the Galactic Federation. Right. And they made promises that they had no intention in, on keeping. And, you know, for those of you guys that know about the MJ 12 or the Majestic 12, you guys that know about the shadow government, they have made deals with certain entities. They made deals. Here's what happened. My friend Ashtar Athena, who's from the contact days of the 60s, from Giant Rock, people like George Van Tassel. What happened was General Eisenhower had a meeting with the Ashtar Command, which oversees the whole positive forces beyond anything else and all the councils. They met in a desert area with the Ashtar command people. This is a true story. What happened, people, is that the Zeta also met with General Eisenhower. General Eisenhower knew that if he sided with the Ashtar command people, which were human, very spiritual people, in 2024, our planet would be way different than it is now. What they did is they said, okay, we're not, we know what you're saying is good, but we're going with the Zeta because the Zeta will give us reverse engineer technology. In return for that, uh, you know, in that technology, so we can build ships like your ships. Uh, you can abduct and experiment with human beings, and that's what the whole thing was. You, what you're going into is my friend Athena told us, uh, you know, years ago. She's from the Ashtar Command. She's in her 70s, and uh, she's a beautiful person. She's not on TikTok, but um, they had a meeting. Jell Eisenhower did have a meeting a few times in the desert, and they made a decision to go with the negative, with the with the Zeta, and that was the pre problem for over 70 years. Oh. Yeah. Well, I do want to say, since we're bringing up the Zeta, because um, I, I have to say this, and for you guys that don't know me, I've, I've had my encounters. Oh, yeah. Um, 
on on ships and i i know my origins and i have a i have a, a lot of dealings with things that's going on um all the zetas are not bad they are not there were zetas that i actually saw on our ship that I well, was, mo most most of the zetas that are in control the ones that are bad is well what's a, as there's a small percentage that are forced to do what they're being told to do uh by the ones that are controlling them but they're just like anything else but they're also there are a lot that are bad because they are actually uh, involved in first of all they messed up their planets by uh by getting so advanced that they got involved in technology instead of the spiritual levels they got so technically advanced that they they lost their emotional feelings they lost their ability to have what my space family does on the ships which are human beings about seven eight feet tall that are human um most of most of the astro command are human uh there are some species out there within the zeta community of zeta that might be opposed to what other zetas are doing i grant that that is probably true um they do have a choice but uh the people that are in charge from the zeta planetary systems are the ones that 70 years ago agreed to what the government told them to do with general eisenhower uh and uh, i was only a kid then but you know they they told them that they can go and abduct humans and that's what they did and it's it totally was against universal law but they did it anyway yeah you have some of them that are cloned um that have been cloned and but there are there there were some of them on the ship that i was on so the ship that i was on had council members on that ship because they told them that they were not allowed to do anything until the mothership arrives so a lot of people, you know, when we talk about ETs, interdimensional beings, there's a lot. A lot of people keep getting stuck on the Anunnaki only. They forget that there's so many more. Um, there are a lot of other orders outside of even the Galactic Federation. Well, that, there's, tell... there's a lot of there's a lot of star beings, so we don't want to get too confused, you know, because people. It's like you know, like when you look at the United. And this is why I like to to teach people. You have the United Nations, right? The United Nations represents small and big countries all over planet Earth. That, so if you take that analogy, look at the Astro Command as being the overseer of all the galactic groups, which they are. They oversee every one of them, and they're different levels, but it's not like a, like a government where you have a Congress and a Senate, which is really corrupt. These are spiritual levels of councils that all have different things they have to do within the universe. So we're all talking into the same track. So now on that thing you were mentioning about the police having that guidebook. When was that published? Just recently? Um, it was in June, mm -hmm. this past June. However, I guess depending on the state, depending on the state and the departments, they held some type of training or yeah. you know, to, to brief them on what's going on. Um, yeah. I can tell you that I have had, and um, if my sis Crystal is on here, she can vouch for me because I sent her the video. Yeah. Um, I have had a um, a visitor coming to my house, watching over my house for about two or three hours the last couple nights. Really? And yes, yes. So they actually come. If you have star family, if you are part of some of the other orders, they actually do come and check on you. They come and check on you. And yeah. no, I believe I, that. I called my son outside because. I'm watching it, and so someone is, that's just passing by, they may say, oh, that's that's just an um, airplane. No, that was not, an airplane does not move like that, and the airplane does not stay in the same, hover in the same area for, for two and three hours at a time. Um, and again, I sent this to other people that I know, and they were like, oh, oh my gosh. I mean, it definitely yeah. is what, it, it is definitely the same thing. And there's another young lady that lives about an hour from me and yeah. she caught the same thing on camera. So, I mean, they're here. They're, they're, don't get me wrong. There are those that we're waiting on, but they are here. They um, are definitely here. I do want to ask you, have you seen that guy that's been making those videos? Um, his page, so his he has a series coming out December the 21st called The Saga of Balaam. Have you seen it by any um, chance? I have. Um, I just want to say Janice. Janice, stick around. Janice is in the UK. She's had positive contact. Janice, I'm just following you. I'm going to bring you up. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's bring Janice up here to join us with Simply Ellie. This is going to be good. I usually, sometimes I'll do this. Janice, 
uh, just press the, yeah, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to all be friends here. That's why I like to do it. Janice, I saw your thing. Say hello to Ellie. Hello, Ellie. Hi, how are you? Can I please Jan- say yes. that I honor each individual's experience and I'm a positive person with an open mind and I embrace all. And I, I was reading your comment, hello, I'm from the UK, England, and I've had contact from 2008 after working with higher dimensional beings. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the higher, tell us about your experience. Well, I'll try and cut a long story short. Um, in the late 90s, I went for a reading, even though I'd had otherworldly experiences from a child growing up but my parents would just go oh you've got an over active imagination etc so i just pushed it to one side and then in the late 90s i went for a reading i was like oh a reading from a medium my friend said, oh, do you want to go and have a reading of the medium? <laughs> What's that, small, medium or large? I was very naive. Uh, and this was when I was nearly 40 years of age. I had a massive, mm-hmm. huge learning curve and awakening. Mm-hmm. And this lady was in her 70s, and she was actually friends with Dolores Cannon. Oh, yeah, I remember Dolores Cannon when she was alive, yeah. Yeah. Well, when Dolores Cannon visited the UK and she met my mentor, who was then in her 70s, I spoke to a friend on... There was a a website years and years ago called lightworkers.org, and one of the admins, uh, this lady, trained under Dolores Cannon. She said, oh... Dolores said she visited England and met this amazing lady called Margaret Cram. I said, well, that was my mentor. Mm. And I was Mm fast-tracked. I mean, I was there one minute just going for a reading, just opening up. And she says, oh, my God, you have all the abilities. I want you in my development circle. Which of the Mm -hmm. five-year waiting list? Mm -hmm. I was going, Mm -hmm. but I don't get anything. Marvellous. Marvellous. So many people sit in front of me and say, oh, they get this and they get that and they've got all these abilities and they've got nothing. And you're sat there going, you get nothing, but you've got everything. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) fast track forward. I was born as a healer, not to be a medium, but I have all the mediumistic abilities which are to be used in healing. And then fast track forward again, another 10 years, and... I am. Le- I, I didn't have the internet, nothing like that. I used to use my own ch- intuition. I'd go to a bookstore and a book would fall out. And that was what I needed. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up working with, I was given this old fashioned, you know, this is how old I am, <laughs> C90, right. C90 tape from Margaret Cram, and there was only ever seven of these pips in the world Mm -hmm. from a channeling from a guy in Los Angeles of Ashtar. Are you talking about Ashtar or Bashar? No, not Bashar, Ashtar. Ashtar. Of the Galactic Federation. Now, I know the New Age movement hijacked it and called it the Galactic Federation of Light and Ashtar Sharan, which is rubbish. It's Ashtar, right. plain and simple, and it's just it's the Ashtar. Galactic Federation. I, I, I work with the Ashtar Command. The Ashtar Command is simply the Ashtar Command. Yes, exactly. Well, this is what or who this group of individuals that I worked with back in like 2005, 2006, 
and then they guided me i didn't have the internet or anything they said you have to lose everyone you know all your spiritual connections even my best friend no she's your reiki master and she's attuned you to reiki too but you've not to go any further and they put a block on it you have to use the abilities that you were born with and i found it very isolating so i sat for three years on my own no internet nothing and said your team up there they only want you to work with them and then after that it was like okay now you've learned you've grown you can go on the internet now so i borrowed my daughter's laptop <laughs> uh, but before that i had a really really weird experience I, i'm very grounded and very normal and i suppose that is why they worked with me i wasn't airy fairy or head in the clouds i was a normal person living my life as a single parent bringing up my daughter and my elderly mother who lived with me looking after her too i even question it now at times and i go don't be silly johnny because i was lucky enough to have other people witness what happened mm -hmm. and i used to have and i learned to use discernment and i did experience uh what you would say uh ufos but right. a lot of them were man-made right but you, you also mentioned in your comments and this is encounters the late night spiritual ufo talk show that you had physical encounters with star yeah. people can you, can you yeah. tell our audience about that specific part of your life well i found my mother and father went to mexico in 1970 and they visited uh ancient sites mesoamerican sites like Chichen Itza and Teotihuacan and they brought back two wall like two plaques that you could put on the wall mm -hmm. and one was in Malachite the crystal Malachite the Mayan calendar but I didn't know what it was and they also the other one they brought back was like uh, I think it was like Quetzalcoatl but it looked more Egyptian than Mayan. Mm. Lost them from like late seventies, and at this period of time, I found them in a box in the garage. So I put them up on either side of the chimney breast, mm -hmm. and I was working at the time with the angelic host and the angels of the violet flame because i was doing saint germain archangel zadgil violet flame work into the earth and into the life stream on earth and into the collective consciousness of humankind to uh consume and transmute all that is destructive leaving only that which is constructive it's not my choice i can't decide what's good or right, bad so, but what happened and then with, it opened yeah. a portal yeah. right so when did this physical contact happen for people that are a lot of people uh, don't know right exactly. okay it's just i wanted to give a little bit of a background uh, yeah, story the background. You, so now i'll yeah. get to the nitty-gritty yeah the nitty-gritty yeah go ahead um my friend who was a medium even though i did train as a medium but only to assist my healing and i have which the lady told me i have a i was born with a fully operational eighth chakra so i have a direct connection up to i am presence so i just know things now a medium friend 
He goes, oh my god, Janice, your dining room, which is attached to my living room, is full of beans. I said, well, I can't see them. And he was like, oh my goodness, there's so many, and they're bowing down to you. So he took a photo. It was just phenomenal. And then after that, a couple of months later, I'm sitting here on my laptop on a, a, a morning, like 10 a.m., and I could just feel this energy. Mm. So I felt it over the right-hand side of me, near the, the door into the inner hallway, but the door was closed. So I stood over the other side of the room, and I took a photo. And when I clicked on it it just was like the normal photo of that area of my home two seconds later i took another photo and boom it's all this aqua aquamarine light which is really funny because at that time i was working with uh the angelic league of light with the aquamarine ray and it came through and i went oh Okay. <laughs> and then a few seconds later, I took another one and a completely different image came back. It looked like an alien kind of being, but it was very feminine. And I think it was, uh, and that was in aquamarine light too. I'd love to be able to send you the photos because they're phenomenal. I yeah. have sent them in an email to the guy that is uh, on here called Our True History. And then also, my friend took a photo. I was looking out of the front of my house, the window. He said, oh my God, John, if I want to take a photo, there's a being there. And it was a feline being, and it was mirroring my image and it was a lion-headed being from Sirius. Hmm. Yeah, well, the, the ones with a lion head are basically Lyrian. No, but this was a Syrian being. Yeah, I don't know about them looking like that. I know that the Lyrians yeah. look like that. Well, that is the Lyrians also can be feline, but also you can get the lion-headed beings from the Syrian star system. So you, did you physically see these beings physically? Uh, I did see and witness not these beings in my home because mm. they're from another dimension, so they have to come through on a particular ray of light mm -hmm. the same as where you get sound vibration they right. can only manifest for you to pick them up on say a digital photo right i want to stop because you for a minute. They, they it's like a bleed through right right so I but i have minute. seen with yeah. my own the, eyes the photos uh, yeah I i'd like to see the photos Sure. I have, well, it's very, I don't think I can do it on here, on TikTok, but if you wanted to send me your email address, I could email you them. Yeah, I will definitely mention my email on here. Let me get back to Ellie for a minute, because she still was finishing up some information. Yes. Ellie, come on back in uh, regarding uh, the whole thing with the police manual about ETs, oh, and yeah. uh, we're going to... Well, our, our, our show's going to go off before one because I've been on here since 10 p.m. Eastern. In the oh, US I'm sorry. Here. It's the first <laughs> time I've come across it, so I've joined I'm, late. I, well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to have you as a new uh, interview and also part of the Encounters family here. So uh, let me switch back over to, to Ellie. And mm -hmm. uh, Janice, I want to thank you for being here, too. And I Ellie, thank you so much. Oh, you're a blessing. And God you're bless you. You too. You're yeah, doing great on. work. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that very much from you. Uh, thank you. 
and uh, and uh, Janice is over in the UK, so I'll give her a round of applause for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring Janice down here. We're gonna come uh, to uh, a near closing here. It's been a great show, but I want to go back to Ellie, uh, and let's finish up a little bit with the police manual. Yeah, what we were talking about. Let's uh, get into that just a little bit more. So I want to um, I want to preface this by saying too, this handbook, especially if I have any law enforcement here that's listening, this handbook was issued by the Major City Chiefs Association. Um, for those that know what that is, and if you don't, I'll go ahead and read it to you so you know, like this is legitimate. Right. Okay. Yeah. The Major City Chief Association, the MCCA, is a professional organization of police executives representing the largest cities in the United States and Canada. The MCCA provides a unique forum for our, um, urban chiefs, sheriffs, and other law enforcement executives to share ideas, experiences, and strategies. The MCCA provides a collaborative forum for the advancement of public safety through innovation, research, policy development, government engagement, community outreach, and leadership development. Now, I feel the need to tell you guys as well who's involved in this so you guys will know, like, this is very, um, this is something that's right. relative to most of us, right? I'm gonna read off the cities. The Eastern, the Eastern region includes cities like Atlanta, Georgia, Baltimore, Maryland, um, Boston, Massachusetts, Buffalo, New York, um, uh, Charlotte, Mecklenburg, North Carolina, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, uh, Detroit, Fairfax County, Virginia, Jacksonville, Florida, Louisville, Kentucky, Miami, um, Montgomery County, Maryland, Nassau, uh, Nassau County, New York, New York City, Newark, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, Pittsburgh, PA, Philadelphia, PA, Prince George, Maryland, Raleigh, North Carolina, Tampa, Florida, Salt Lake County, New York, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Arlington, Texas, Austin, Texas, Chicago, Dallas, El Paso, Fort Worth, Houston. It it, it just goes on. It goes, and, yeah, it goes on and on, right? It goes right? on and on. So it's it's the big, the large cities. So yeah. they are giving them guides on UAPs and how to deal with them. And um, it says in the report, it's under unknown threat to public safety. Now, guys, I have connections. But a lot of us have connections with you know I, you know these other these these higher dimensional beings right so the way that they're prefacing this the way that th this is written is written as if they pose a public safety threat so right. unknown threat to right. public safety reports released um by aaro odni among the u.s government and nonprofit entities claim that right. uaps present a clear threat to national Clear security <laughs> right. since their capabilities and origins are unknown, which that's BS because you know that they know what some of them, they know. Yeah, I mean, so, the people, you know, and Ellie, you're right. You know, the people in my contacts over the years on the inside and even currently since I've been on here on TikTok, they, they know who the space, the positive space people are that are out there. They're coming to Earth now, ready, getting ready for contact. They're coming, coming from all over the known universe beyond this universe and you know they they're publishing these things so it's basically uh basically trying to control the population when contact happens still the really funny thing is folks you want to know what the really funny thing is i've stated before in this show as we bust the matrix here is that the governments of the world the top secret governments that are working with each other with this with the extraterrestrial situation that's now going to be a, th a thing now that in this year, in this time period, that we're actually going to have contact with positive space people, they are a threat to our planet, right? So they have all these fear-based things like Ellie's reading about from that guidebook. And it's not just that. I bet you all sectors of the military and the Pentagon, all branches are being prepped up and to get ready for potential invasion of something that's not an invasion at all, that's not a threat to our planet, that happens to be the complete opposite but the thing is, the good news is, no matter what government it is in the world, whether it's the U.S., the military, the Pentagon, whatever, it makes no difference. When the Astro Command people come here with their ships and their fleets coming here, they're gonna, our governments are going to be no match for those ships. Those ships are going to shut down every weapon on this planet. And I'm telling you, that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. It will happen. Yeah, it's... 
there are things going on right now. And what I'm reading again, I, I, what I'm reading, it is evident that, you know, they made an agreement to give humanity full disclosure. And as we know, they yeah. did not keep that covenant, right? They broke that yep. agreement. They broke it. And they broke it. So instead of them giving us full disclosure, they're, it's going to wind up coming from these higher frequency beings are going to be the ones to give us disclosure. So that, right. what they're doing right now, for those that have watched Scandal, <laughs> They are they are literally painting. They're setting the stage to make it look like um, that they're um, nef they have nefarious intentions that right, they're trying right. to harm us. So people yep. will be in fear. Now, those of you guys that know about you know Loosh or the fact that we give off this energy that we can we can literally feed certain entities with uh, our don't be in fear. Do do not give into fear know who you are and know what what you're capable of because they right. that's what they want like li I mean, l listen to this wording here um although incidents of uaps causing harm or inflicting injury on civilian populations have has never been reported their motives and threat capabilities are unknown therefore yeah. it is in the interest of law enforcement to be aware of trends and reporting of UAPs due to the unknown threat they they may pose and their right. continued uh -huh. presence and controlling and restricted and restricting right. airspace. Check. You know, is that, you isn't that, that? Yeah. Now let me let's let's just you know, and we're gonna stay on for a few more minutes. And I got Ashley here as a, a dear friend of the show. Um, and hey, Ashley, good evening or good morning or whatever. Um, you know, we are putting uh, plans in and saying like our authorities say we control the airspace and you out there all you space people that are coming here to help the planet and the human population are not allowed to come into our restricted airspace let me tell the government something if they're monitoring this show which they do momentarily that you need to realize that when the Astro command spaceships come here and they are here now cloaked around the planet when the many many more fleets come here there's going to be like a fireworks display above the earth and you're going to be hiding in a bathroom somewhere and you can take your, 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 your restricted airspace and tear it apart. There is no restricted airspace. Ashley. Hey, good, good morning. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Um, I know it's late. So just wanted to say real quick, cause I seen that, um, I heard what she was talking about and I heard a couple days ago that they were talking about this on TikTok. Um, my friend Mary, um, some people maybe in here have probably seen her on here. Um, I'm a moderator for her and she is about talking about this stuff, but she, she does like this presentation type thing and she has one of the firemen's manuals and I think they just maybe have like I don't know. I think she said five of them. It looks yeah. to be like from like the eighties, but it is yeah. in there and chapter yeah. 13. Yeah. It talks about, um, if you come into contact with a UFO, do not touch it. Let the government handle it. And if you do touch it or anybody, a citizen, NASA can legally take you and detain you for however wow. long they want. They can detain you for touching a spaceship. Yep, that's what it says in the Amazing. fireman's manual. Yep. Wow. Well, you know what? The the between the fireman's manual and the new updated stuff from the official police officers thing told the police departments, and even our Pentagon. Yeah, you know, I got news. If any of those people are listening out there in the in the upper echelons of the Pentagon, you better be aware that there are going to be. And there will be direct contact and disclosure not coming from you because you don't want disclosure. It's going to be coming from my space brothers and sisters off planet that are coming here from all over, uh, all over beyond this, this galaxy. And uh, so in a year and a half, when contact starts to happen, what are they going to do? They can't, they can't arrest people on earth because they're going to be not able to do that. They're going to be, there's no way they can take millions of people and arrest people for having contact with space people. They might try to do it. I don't think they'll be able to do it. Nope. You know, 
pretty interesting. Just saying, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, well, I'm going to hop down. I'm going to go back inside. Now I got out at 11. I'm just now getting home. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, well, you, you realize I'm going to be going to sleep in a few minutes. It's been a crazy <laughs> show. It's been a great show tonight, but it's been crazy. Every show is great. But, uh, Ashley, thank you for sharing that. No problem. You guys have a good right. night. Yep, hey. I'll let you go. Let's see here. And we'll turn on Ellie for just a second or two. It's been a great time having you on and having all our guests on tonight. Any final comments, Sally, uh, on Encounters? Yeah. yeah, you know, just, you know, this is what I would recommend, especially to those who are just now, um, you know, tapping in, because I, I have dealt with a lot of people who were gaslighting themselves and, you know, while they were having experiences, but they were right. trying to rationalize it. You know, when if you are one of those, you know, one of those individuals that are, having these experience with other entities learn how to read energetic signatures because no matter what they say no matter what they look like your the energy doesn't lie energy does not lie and that's one of the things that i learned to do was to read their energy um there's a lot of things that's going to be going on use your discernment because you're going to hear a lot of lies there's going to be a lot of lies told and you know they are going to make the story look they're going to try to paint the narrative they're doing it right now they're setting the stage right now they are. they're setting so. the stage because they know they know like we know ellie that there's going to be if you know about our story with april you know that one of the things i want to say this right now this is for all the new people okay uh, my friend april friends with furious has been over 80 probably over 80 times since uh last year in northern vermont going on the ship we all met through my TikTok show, April, Johnny of the Third Kind, Kit Kat, and also Chesno, who's uh, in Connecticut. It was all organic. We don't, none of us knew each other, just like when I do interviews like with Ellie and other people. We met. I said, Commander, you're going to be going off, on, off planet. What do you mean? I come to find out, and this, is a, this will be a motion major, major, major motion picture someday in the history books. That I have two, I have two sisters and a brother on a spaceship of the Ashtar Command. I have a father named Robar, a mother named Luna. Now we all have biological families. I knew that since I was a kid. I came here off planet. I had experiences all my life through the '60s with spaceships and everything. So I've been well involved in my my mature age. As I became an adult, I became fully activated. Um, so then I meet people like April and uh, find out that we are, I do see, I've seen pictures of my space father. He's physically human, taller. Uh, my mother, I haven't seen a picture of yet. I will. I have two sisters and a brother. So, you know, uh, one of the things that's going to be happening is the council of the Ashtar Command, which oversees everything, had uh, chose uh, through April's suggestion, uh, this is a while ago, that I should be the one they would have be on the ship i'll be in a control panel center on this ship and um they monitor they watch my show right now they're probably watching my show they watch my show whenever i'm on with monitor screens on a central control area i'll be on a ship with four other ashtar people that they'll have ch- chosen from the ship itself or from the command i'll be broadcasting to the whole planet i don't know when this is going to happen but for new people, you need to know this because this I'm telling you a true story. This is not some like movie picture, some fabrication, or role playing. This is really a true story. When they take me on the ship, a rift will open up. I'll be taken no matter where I am in my room. I will go on the ship in two seconds. I will probably be in a spacesuit. I'll be sitting at a control panel. And at that point, every broadcast system, every transmitter on the planet will be overtaken by the Ashtar Command. However they do it, don't ask me, but it will be done. I'll be broadcasting whatever it is I'm supposed to say before major contact happens. They will broadcast to every single country in the world and translate it in every single language on the planet. And whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter to me. I already know what, what's going to happen. But I just wanted to add that in for the new people that are learning about things here. This is the place where you're going to find disclosure. People like Ellie on my show. This is where you're going to find what's going to be happening on all of the social media right on this talk show. I guarantee it. Ellie, any final words from you before we uh, call it a night? 
Um, yeah, you know, again, don't, you know, operate in knowing, do not operate in fear because the changes that are come that are taking place, these are much needed changes. Um, yeah. Yeah. things can't stay the way that they are. They can't. Right, right. So again, love and light. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead and, and keep on, you, you know, your journey with ascension, because regardless, we're all each individually going through our journey, but collectively we're also going through ascension together. So we got this guys. So I love you guys and you know, I'll, I'll see you around. You know, Ellie, are you using a, a, um, a ear pod? I'm not, it's probably because I, hold on. It might be because of my fan. Do you hear noise? Okay. Hello. Yeah. I'm I'm interfering with your, I'm interfering with your uh, phone. Okay. Yeah, this has been happening lately. My energy, it interferes with people's. It's been happening. Uh, I think it's my energy from the command. It's all that energy. So uh, it just started happening. So uh, I don't want it to go crazy and start echoing all over the place in the universe. So, Ellie, thank you for being here. Ellie, everyone, thank you, Ellie. You're a great guest always. And uh, we're going to call it night, folks. So it's like left at one. I'm ready to go call it evening. We'll be on tomorrow night at uh, our usual time, 11 o'clock. So stay tuned for more encounters tomorrow night. This show will be on my YouTube channel uh, sometime by the morning when it's daytime. I'll be putting this on YouTube. My channel on YouTube is Ashtar Command Spaceship News. Ashtar Command Spaceship News. I'm also on Sunday mornings on WESU NPR Pacifica Radio at 11.30 a.m. and live on TikTok with my show on radio uh, every Sunday morning, WESUFM.org. Uh, so please do watch the show Sunday morning. Everybody, thank you, all the new people. Uh, you've now found an actual show that deals with the spiritual aspects of uh, the UFO area. I'm also a contactee, and so I've had I have a lot of knowledge in this area. Ellie, again, thank you for being here. Have a good morning. Uh, Brenda, thank you for the gifts. Let me bring Ellie down. And I know, uh, there we go. So I want to thank you all for being here. And you can show your support by doing any kind of TikTok gifts you want right now. So we're going to do a final part of the show is gifting uh, tonight. It's been a great show as always. Some great guests and a great audience of people from all over the place. Uh, so please follow me. Uh, if you're not following me, following me on TikTok, please do. Uh, Tully, Tully, Tar. So if you're not following me, please do. And you can gift me any kind of gift you feel that you have TikTok coins to do. Uh, thank you, uh, Hetty, for helping out and all my uh, moderators and myself. I moderated some of it myself here. Thank you, everybody. Love and light to all of you. As I say, uh, thank you, Red Jen. Uh, we're going to get some good good sleep. Hey, Golden Bar, thank you. MIA, uh, thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate everybody. You know, And I want to send my love out to all 400 of you out there plus, You know, all the new people. I'm glad you found this show finally, and uh, you're going to be addicted to the show. So I thank you, Sharon. Thank you. And again, if you can send any gifts right now, please do it. Uh, Johnny, Dane, uh, Johnny, thank you. Tasha, thank you, everybody. Uh, again, uh, I'll just go look at the, the screen, and whatever gifts you want to send, you pick them, throw them in, at the screen here. I like the whales. I like the, the, the galaxies. I like all that stuff. Thank you, Sharon. We uh, certainly appreciate your appreciating us. Uh, and everything. Tara, thank you for the follow. And dazed, to heart dazed. I, when I do the hat, I will do a thing called Tahar, and that's something that's an actual plant off planet called a Tahar. Uh, so yeah, but if you do the, uh, the hat with the mustache, I will do the Tahar. Um, I'll be happy to do Golden Bear. Thank you for the roses. Uh, I want to thank everybody again for being here. Uh, Lee, uh, Lee, thank you for the follow. Uh, brother, we appreciate you. Everybody out there, uh, we appreciate you here. So, Golden Bear, thank you for the roses. Now we're going to see who can do the biggest gift. So we're going to end the show with the biggest gift someone can actually show me on the show for the first time. Janice, thank you for the roses. We appreciate it. Let me see what happens on my screen. Well, there's somebody out there that has a, like a bazillion TikTok coins. Uh, show me some love here. Let me see what it is. Well, let's, let's see what's going to happen. Is it going to be a whale? I like the whale thing that goes like it sounds like it's going into the ocean. You know, so we'll see. 
Uh, actually, not payday yet. I got gotcha. you. Mine is coming tomorrow. So I know what Thursdays are for me. Well, again, thank you, everybody. Uh, I need a second job. Brenda, yes. <laughs> thank you, Janice. We appreciate you all. Anyway, we're going to get out of here. Uh, we'll catch you all tomorrow night. Everybody have a good morning. And remember, we are Disclosure and keep your eyes to the skies. Here we go.